welcome to Stones Live tonight, and we have a one, two, three, no limit, and I'm here with a guest star, Robbie Abalone. He has been with me on many final tables, and this is one gentleman who knows how to play no limit poker like no other. Robbie himself, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, making my debut here on commentating, uh, but have run into Tom, unfortunately, many times at the poker table, so glad that he's my partner. Uh, looks like we're going to be watching one, two, three, no limit hold'em here about to get started in a few minutes and just pumped and ready to see some poker yeah no tonight should be great it's one two three no limit it's 500 max buy-in now it is table stakes so like if somebody does double up right away uh the uh, opponent can then match their stack so like if i happen to make a thousand dollars that person can then buy in for a thousand and beat me yeah. which is uh, a very scary aspect. Yeah, tonight's game should be a lot of fun to watch. But a cool thing, though, with uh, matching the, the table max or whoever has the highest, it can make up for some juicy games, especially if someone gets down pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, hopefully we're in for a good one here. Yeah, no, definitely hope so. We've got uh, a G-Man Dave in seat one. I mean, we're going to go through the list here. But, uh, yeah, we've got G-Man in seat one, Dave C in seat two, Alex B in seat three, Mark in seat four, and bunch of other nicknames <laughs> that we'll get to as we go but uh looks like alex has turned the nuts here looks like uh already all in yeah no nope. and mark so, g is okay. definitely not giving up i think he may have been floating or attempting something okay. along the way i mean i can't think of any other reason for him to be in the pot <laughs> unless it was checked all the way of course <laughs> no so uh yeah, no, tonight's lineup. There you go. There you've got it. You've got Watt Bry, who's another uh, Stones Live regular in seat six. Stuart in seven. Eight, or seat eight is uh, Jeremy, and seat nine is uh, Backdoor. Or, uh, no, seat one is actually G Man. He's very. He's actually one of the uh, floor here who likes to play occasionally. He's uh, a lot of fun. Really, really good lineup. Good. Yeah, so. Robbie, when's the last time you've seen me? This should be fun. Um, probably one of these tables out here uh, about a week and a half ago. All maybe, right. maybe two uh, weeks ago. I'm talking about like, when's the last time we've been at the table together? Oh, uh, probably a WSOP event or one of the final tables out here. There we go. Stones, so yeah. No, this guy I always see. He's always playing in the WSOP stuff. But uh, G-Man here looks like he's going to open up with uh, Ace Nine Offsuit. And uh, Dave's coming along, so is Alex and Mark. Yeah, no, what do you... So, you've got Jack-10 here with a double gutter. And uh, I don't know that anybody else has anything. I mean, do you kind of uh, agree here? Yeah, I, I think Wapri has a soft backdoor hearts and Alex with a second pair here. Yeah. I think it's another spot just to check, check, check. Looks like it's going check, check, check right now. Uh, no, it's going to say this is a pot that's probably highly purchasable. It doesn't look very big. It doesn't look worth fighting over. And I don't see too much money in the middle. I don't. That always matters. I mean. Obviously, when you bluff, do you prefer to bluff a small pot? No, I, pot? Uh, if there's nothing in the middle, there's no reason really for me to get in there. Unless I get bored. So, it's, yeah. it's like six, it's hour seven or hour eight in there. And, uh, sometimes a leak in my, in my <laughs> game. You'll start opening hands with a uh, 5-4 offsuit and see if you can find a way to win. So, it looks like we're chopping... The second pair. Yeah, no, they do have uh, two pair of tens and eights with uh, king for a kicker, and it was uh, checked around and chopped at the end there. So, not necessarily a super exciting hand, but I'm sure there's going to be one because this game is big. Yeah. What do you think uh, largest pot size is going to be tonight? I mean, oh man, hopefully we get uh, north of a. If we have a couple all ins, maybe we can get a. North of a thousand, hopefully. But I'm just gonna say, maybe five hundred, seven hundred dollar okay. range until we hit that big thousand. You're really setting the line. I could set the line at fifteen hundred, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm thinking there's gonna be a two, three k, 
maybe even a 3K or a giant pot. Yeah. yeah, as people chip up. Because, uh, you know, in a table stakes game, people tend to, I don't know, do you find that in the 1-3 game here that people tend to, like, keep well, buying? My thing is, uh, what I usually see is when people just bought in, they're all still trying to feel each other out a little bit. And then once people start getting comfortable and in their groove and in their zone, then, then uh, pots get a little bit bigger. Okay. As long with the chip stacks, too. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're definitely a more frequent 1 3 player here than I am. I mean, like, you know, and I'd love to know any insights you've got. And as far as this hand goes, uh, Dave has made a pair of eights. and It's like checking the whole way down. Yeah, it looks like they're both uh, sort of soft playing it. Yeah. Still feeling it out, still a little early. Yep. Yeah. No, definitely agree. The early thing. That's That's important. On the Stones Live camera, you don't want to be the first one to lose all your money. <laughs> True. You also, also dynamics with the stream, you also sometimes don't want to be the guy who gets bluffed or bluffed a lot. Uh, I think maybe that will cause a dynamic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, player dynamics, a little bit different when you know people are seeing what you hold. You think uh, that induces a lot of checking and a lot of... Uh... It could initially, uh, but I think once people start forgetting about the stream part of it, forget about the stuff, and they just play their own hands, maybe they'll start seeing um, how they usually play and why they felt comfortable playing in this game. Right on. So Jeremy is going to open up here for uh, 12 with ace-king suited. And uh, how do you feel about that number? I mean, obviously... Uh, four, four xing but he is a little early, so... Now, if you get three bet, like eights, it looks like it's going to do in this spot. What would be your reaction? I mean, I'm just trying to get into your. I think you have a couple a couple options. You can you can smooth call or go ahead and and pump it up beyond them. So he's getting three bet here. Uh, I think both options are there. I don't think he's folding. Uh, a smooth call or so here's just smooth calling. For me, since he doesn't have position on him, a smooth call is probably a yeah. probably the better option here. Yeah. No, I definitely actually agree. Now. He's fully, obviously, Eights is fully taking control by doing the raising and finding out if there's a huge hand behind him. And he gets oh, four like bet four behind, bet. or three bet behind. So this is interesting because this is actually, I like this play. Yeah. You know, like out of position, you're in the small blind or close to the small, you're essentially the small blind because you're first to act on the flop. Um, you need to find out if you're up against Kings or Aces right now. You're doing that. You're also applying pressure on ace queen or middle pairs like this, and it's like he's gonna take down the pot. Perfect. Yeah, Jeremy played it perfect. That is absolutely. I mean, you heard it from Robbie himself <laughs> that uh, that was the way to go. You know, like I said, that was definitely the way to go. So, uh, welcome to Stones Live. Thank you for watching. Uh, click that like, subscribe do all that stuff uh we will be out of stones jail soon so uh a couple more nothing, weeks yeah nothing to worry about there and uh yeah no welcome to stones live poker and this is our signature game one two three <laughs> there we go 45 days sir 45 days ago we're at the halfway mark yeah no, that was just because of a miscommunication. I don't know any of the other thing else. That's all I'm... And we'll just leave it there. Dave with uh, Queen 8 offsuit. This in your, that's, not, that's not in my opening range. Is that in your... I mean, uh, if I'm feeling creative, maybe. Um, or if I feel like it's going to be a soft game. But as of right now, it's a good move to let it go. Yeah. So, so you think um, early cash cam like this is probably best just to sort of sit, relax? Yeah, well, I'm I'm pretty observant player. I try to see how people are playing, and if there's no reason to be playing, I feel like cool. for the hand. Yeah. But as we say that, what a Yahtzee flop for Alex. He's got an open-ended straight flush draw, and if Jeremy makes a straight, then with a non-completing diamond, we're liable to see some death here. I mean, like. It's hard to put somebody on a flopped flush, and uh, I don't know. I vote for the betting out option from Alex because I think as both options are available here. Yeah, because he doesn't represent a flush by sort of bumping out. Yeah. Now, so he's, he's gonna he's gonna leading that with thirty. Got to fold, that. and let's see what Jeremy does here. 
Jeremy with the call. All right, Ten of Spades peels off. Uh, doesn't improve anyone, but it does pair the board, making the King High flush draw no longer second best. Alex fires out an $80 bet. Jeremy quickly folds. So that seems like a pretty standard and an amazing flop for Alex. Yeah, that is Yahtzee. What a bad turn for both players. Yeah. All right. So Alex did go ahead and take it down with a second bet on the Yeah, turn. he fired a 80 into the pot uh, and two second thought and fold. Yeah. Didn't wow. really pick up too much equity on the turn. Yeah, no. If the turn were a black ace or a black nine, that would have been Some just fireworks. dangerous. And I really like the leading instead of checking. Because if you check call and then check raise a turn, you're kind of representing nothing but a flush. Yeah. And so I think you run a equity wise, you know, run the risk. I mean what a, what a, what do you I mean, it, sometimes I, I, it depends on the dynamics. If I know there's an aggressive player after me, sometimes I'll check it to it, and such a hammer lock, I'll m maybe play coy a little bit and and uh, see lock. where it goes. You're gonna yeah. have to explain that term to me. It's a uh, you have you flopped second nuts essentially, and uh, other than the ace high flush, that's the only one you, you could really worry about. Well, here we have queens raising in the hijack. I saw 20. ace jack just quickly throw it away. That's actually a really good decision. Yeah. G-Man with the call with ace queens offset. Oh, if a top set shows up, even though we know there's no queens left, I don't think. Yeah. And ace is it. G-Man checks. Yeah. Whoppery with uh, continuing the betting here. I can't see G-Man continuing. Uh, well, he could because he's not holding any spades, but yeah. No, he's definitely... Uh, Letting it go. Yeah. Good decision. You'll have to excuse me. I'm been, uh, Red Bulled up. I've been shaken, <laughs> not stirred. <laughs> Some bad jokes. What's up, Hop Grenade in the chat? I'd like to get respond to... Uh, Hop Grenade. Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem is the best game in the world. Thank you, Hop Grenade, for reminding me of that. And I remember the 2400 baud and I just the happiest day when I got my 5400 baud modem. Oh. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Well, it's Mark G. Pair of tens. It's fires a bit of 15. That term you use, you're still going to have to explain that. Oh, the hammer me. lock. Uh, it just means that you basically have it locked up right okay. there. Yeah. This is an interesting predicament we have brewing here. So, Mark G's open for a raise. Deuces has come along, and Stewart wakes up with aces. And now he's deciding. He goes ahead, and G-Man oh, wow. finds queens. This deck got really cold really quickly. Oh, man. Talk about a dangerous flop. Um, if G-Man throws in a raise, he's going to lose nothing. Or, I mean, he'll lose what he bet, but he's going to get raised, re raised by aces. But in this situation, somebody is going to hit something. This we is going to be a mess. A four way flop. Oh, deuces Ooh. just flopped, deuces full. Oh, my. Wow. The fourth best hand is now in the lead with, the, with a boat. Against aces and queens and tens, and they all think this is a great flop for them. Yeah. They're in any of those positions, I think this is a great flop for me. I mean, like, say you're Mark G, you have tens here. I mean, I mean, you'll probably just, probably worried about the person who three bet, not yeah. worried about the ones who just smooth called. So you bet one ten. Now, G man, do you think G man what a he, smooth call? Uh, G man, I think both options are raising or calling. He's never folding here. Let's see. Mark G goes all in, but uh, he's for one oh six. It looks like, so his all ins for less. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're definitely going to see a call from Stuart, and now will G-Man overcall? So. Oh, what a hard. cold deck. This is such a sick setup hand. I mean, the hand speaks for itself. Just look at the board. Yeah, so Mark would have to go all in to call, but he would call in, he would 
go all in for less. Would you be thinking that he might be making a move with a flush well, draw? Well, yeah, or? so there's two spades that's out there. You have to think about it. But you can't really think of a four, anyone having a four with a three bet. And honestly, I might take out the deuces out of there, too. So those deuces are well disguised. All right, Wapri with his boat going all in. And that, that puts Stuart and G-Man in tough positions here. Like like I was saying, do you put someone on spades, then you think a call would be good. Yeah. It's so tough to put someone on a four, and putting someone on pocket oh, yeah. deuces, early, um, that's a, such a well-disguised hand right now. What a disciplined laydown from G-Man there with Queens. Oh, yeah. That's a doozy. Now, the ace of, Stuart having the ace of spades, he does block ace kings and ace queens of spades. It does. So it's kind of a he picked up a straight draw here. situation. Yeah, no, and the deuces does run out a winner, and that is a monster pot. Whew. Hey, we're at the pot at 1K. It already, uh, it already surpassed my yeah, my See? of uh, $700, $800. So we're at like the I 1K said, pot. I could have taken you to the bank and yeah. set the line at like... 900 and well i'm the rookie so my line is probably all over the map on this don't, one. yeah like i said don't be shy here yeah. this is uh stones live where uh you get but what a cold deck aces queens tens and deuces go to the flop a and ten? deuces come in yeah no and aces took the brunt of it and uh g-man really saved himself a lot by folding there i mean he obviously he has to know after he makes the bet and it's been cold called and then shipped on it 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 seemed to, it would be a little funky of someone who didn't take the bet leading now all of a sudden is going all in uh, i i think you know sometimes I, I would call there sometimes i would fold there but uh, very disciplined laid down by g man there and aces uh, sometimes you, you go with your read i guess you read that the aces were good there yeah no i mean I, there, what do you, i mean just like you have a two and fours out. Deuces is the only hand you're going to beat. I mean, you, there's no way a player has a four. I mean, you, there is a you way. You could think of four or five suited, a weird three, four suited, but with a three bet pre-flop, with yeah. that many callers, it, or with with that many premium hands that were coming in, that's it's a tough way to see a four. Yeah, no, that's just a, a cooler. And you probably block out ace four because you're holding two of those aces. Yep. No, completely agree. So uh, Jeremy opens to 15 with uh, jacks here, and uh, G-Man has got ace-deuce suited, and I think he's going to come along, and Alex with his ace-10 is going to come along. And uh, what a Wow, flop. again, <laughs> monster flops here. Oh, G-Man, you're so, having a bad start, buddy. I feel bad for you. Alex checks it with uh, in the lead with trip aces with a 10-kicker. And uh, Jeremy probably feels pretty comfortable seeing two aces. It makes jacks look better when you yeah. see two overs rather than two, uh, you know, rather than just one. So no but, one drops from the from the flop betting, and queen comes out. Now the queen's probably gonna get Jeremy to drop. Yeah, I think so. A you lot. have <laughs> yeah a random ace beats you. Queen yeah. gets you. King Queen, obviously. I mean, like, even though you're not gonna get floated on that flop because it's rainbow. I mean, yeah. or do you see many people float and with a rainbow flop like that? I mean, it know. depends on position, also table dynamics, and yeah. if you are comfortable to be able to navigate floating like that. Well, so basically, you need to be uh, Mike Puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Our, well, there we go. Uh, resident hero. Bet of 65. Alex getting a little active here. For the best hand. All aces are out. Yeah, a deuce is the only thing, and it's not going to be a chopped pot. That is the worst card for G-Man, because now the 10 does play. Yes. Yeah. And back-to-back -back kind of pretty big hands yeah. that G-Man was involved in. Did it go uh, It did go check-check on River? It looked like it went check-check River. Maybe it's trying to induce... A, Oh, with uh, ace ten and that board, I mean, how confident do you feel in betting your two um, faces? If the other person just smooth called, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with my lead. Yeah. If I feel like an ace king or an ace queen would would have been a boat, uh, maybe that's the only thing he was worried about. But I think he probably would have heard about ace queen pre flop. Yeah. So you're rethinking the hand. 
definitely think it was worth throwing out a small yeah that check unless you unless he was gonna check to try to induce the other person um, but if someone else hasn't shown any activity okay uh, pre-flop flop or turn I'm probably gonna bet out a little bit to try to get some value with that hand and it and then figure it out if someone raises you then then you can reevaluate there yeah no uh sorry I have to keep track of the chat here I haven't looked at the chat in a while so I'm gonna let Robbie take over on this hand yeah. and uh, take a look see if I need to uh, put hop grenade in a cage. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. Dave with the Jack Deuce off suit. Thinks about it, lets it go. Alex takes it down. Yeah, no, nothing too exciting in that end. No. Just no, that was... That was, that was, I'm still thinking about the aces, the queens, and the aces, deuces, queens, though. and tens. So, oh. three relatively premium, well, three definitely premium hands. And tens, and a deuce. I, I tens came say, along with the flop. Yeah. yeah, he did come along for the one ten. He came for, I think he came along for the flop, but the, and then, uh, but I guess I had to double check. I, I was more focused on the aces, the queens. Yeah, definitely a deuces on a. I was just gonna say, I think tens got off easy there, and the aces <laughs> took the brunt of the. The deuces. You gotta look out for them deuces. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sneaky hand. No, it's, a, it's on a board like that that's got spades on it, and that helps. That helps tens call. That helps queens call, and that helps aces call. You gotta think because you're you, good there. Yeah, because you're thinking like, okay, ace king of spades, ace queen of spades, ace you know something of spades, are hands that would give action on that board. So, yeah, that was a setup and a half. <laughs> And then G-Man again right after that, getting his uh, trips over trips. So it's just... Yeah, so this hand, uh, Rick and Barstow, what's going on, dude? Uh, yeah, no, it's Robbie Robbie in the booth. Robbie what's and going on, man? Tom, I am the Mountain Poker at Twitter. It's uh, something that if you're interested in skiing, I recommend you follow. If you're interested in skiing and poker, I highly recommend you follow me. Otherwise, uh, don't bother. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyways, it's more important to follow Stone's Life. And, uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of good stuff coming up. So here we have top pair with Alex spitting out tens and Mark coming along with second pair. It does complete the flush with uh, the deuce of hearts. Alex with top pair fires again. This looks like a 15. relatively small... It's a small bet. Yeah, just to look them up, 15 bucks. Oh, yeah. I mean, did you toss out the 15 there just to see? Yeah, 15, so it was basically, what was it, like one-third pot, basically. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, it was a pure value bet. Uh, kind of know where he is, or if someone has a bigger hand that you can reevaluate afterwards. But either way, he takes down the pot. I do like the bet sizing for what his opponent had. Obviously, he doesn't know what what he had there, but uh, probably got max value with that bet. Maybe maybe a half size half pot could probably could have gone that way too. But yeah, he went with a relatively safe bet that easily got called and looked up and was able yeah. to take it down. Sometimes that's the best way to go. Really, just to sort of play it safe and like. Your opponent wants to throw a big bluff on you. You can let him have it. You know, it's not the end of the world. You're just kind of like, eh, I'll take a little value. Well, I mean, if he checked there to try to induce, but why would you try to induce if he has just you just have top pair with a medium sized kicker? Yeah, it was kind of a shit ball kicker. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm okay yeah. with that lead. Uh, if you get called, like there's not too many hands that would probably beat you with just a call, but a lot of hands that beat you would probably raise that fifteen dollar, that one third pot. So, I'm all right with that. Mark G needs a loan. Yeah, he has been having a tough start, but you know what? Swings happen. And uh, G-Man here has a heart draw. And uh, let's see how this one comes out. So we have an ace. Doesn't look like there's any aces out there. I uh, got the queen of hearts from uh, Watbury, and I yeah, nobody has a four. No. So uh, G Man really has the only person with who has business being in this pot, and uh, well, backdoor fired fifty. G G Man with his flush jaw. He just went ahead and flat. Yeah, G Man okay. uh, with his flush jaw went and flatted. 
Jack of Diamond pops up. Now, how do you feel about the flat there? Do you prefer a flush draw raise? I mean, well, is that something that you mix up? And well, here, it, 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 well, I, mean, I guess we can talk a little bit about the dyna dynamics right after. Yeah, because obviously but. back door is going to fold. You know, the flush card got there. G Man made his hand. He's he did. Uh, I think if backdoor did bet out, G Man probably gave him credit for a hand. Could okay. be a could be a weak ace, a weird four. Um, so I think he's kind of playing a little bit more cautiously. How do you would you? I mean, like, say he throws a raise there. I mean, you turn your hand into a bluff essentially with equity. Like, how do you feel about playing it that way? Uh, I uh, I like it. I think G Man had it in position too. I if you're gonna do a, I think if you're gonna do a move like that. Uh, knowing that you have outs if the guy didn't flop a boat and you have uh, position on him I don't mind that play as well, but also a dynamic that G-Man is running with is that he had two gigantic hands You know pocket aces that he lost with uh, And then relatively right after trips. Yeah. So uh, It's gonna be a little demoralized a little, maybe yeah. even some of the best poker players How can you not have that be sitting in your hand like oh, I just got beat twice. I'm probably not good here uh, so that might be a dam dynamic there, but there's a lot of options he could have done. He could have raised there. He could have just smooth called. Uh, he made his hand and um, took it down on the river. Wat Bri. My apologies, Rick Barstow. Is it Wat Wat Bri? Wat Bri? Make sure I get that right. It's actually Wat Bri. I apologize to uh, Rick Barstow for mispronouncing here. So uh, we've got a hand in production. And uh, it looks like it was open for 15, and we have three people coming along. Uh, Dave with an 8, 6, uh, 5, 3, diamonds, and uh, a pair of 8s. And uh, this is actually a, a good flop for G-Man, and kind of a, a bad, very bad flop for Dave, obviously, because he connected with nothing. Yeah. And uh, Backdoor can't be, even though he has the best hand, he can't feel good about it. No. I, I mean, a, a random 9 beats a 9-10. Uh, you're blocking 8-9. Uh, and he probably doesn't feel as good again with uh, another overcard coming. Yeah. Now, especially against G-Man, I mean, obviously, if G-Man were to throw in <laughs> a raise here. Yeah, then it puts him in a bad spot and yeah. probably would have to let it go. Well, backdoor fires 55 again with his pocket eights. G-Man didn't pick up a diamond for uh, for his diamond draw, he, backdoor diamond draw he had on the flop. And right now with pocket threes, finds a fold. Yeah, no, that is a good move there by backdoor. He did get away, or basically get a win with eights on a very terrible board. Yeah. He did have the betting lead, and he continued to, to use that uh, and didn't relinquish it over to G-Man. And G-Man with turn didn't help him, and his yeah. uh, backdoor flush draw... Uh, with his pair. Uh, now, say G-Man had a nine there and was just smooth calling all the way. I mean, would you just check, keep check calling? I mean, would you throw in a raise? Uh, maybe on the turn. It definitely depends on on board texture. If if a weird straight card comes out or a weird flush draw comes yeah. out, um, you could s smooth call. You can raise. Uh, I think a lot of the options are available. And again, depending on your uh, position. So you had position on him. So. Uh, I wouldn't mind him getting a little creative there, but uh, yeah. the right play there was the fold on that yeah. board on that turn. Definitely. No, I mean, we get to see the opponent's hand, so it makes us really easy for the booth, but like when you're in the seat, it's a lot different. It is a lot different. And uh, a few colors coming in, and on a jack three six board. Yeah, so we got a pair of threes from King Three and uh, a pair of jacks from Mark G. And uh, that looks like that's about it. Well, Jeremy has a second nut flush draw, King High flush draw. Oh, he does. Yeah. I didn't even see that. Wow. I'm <laughs> in 9 5 here with the double gutter yeah. from uh, Watt Bry. Watt Bry, I believe, which has been corrected by the chat for me. Thank you. Jeremy leads out with his king high flush draw. Alex with third pair calls, and Mark with his jack. Ooh. Now, this river is a bad river, obviously, for all these hands. Now, like, if you're in position, is this a river that's bettable to you? 
Yeah, if, if you think people are scared of it, but also one thing, if you are going to bet and try to bluff at it, you do have to worry about someone who was trying to stick around with the ace high flush draw. Of course, if you're Jeremy, you probably don't worry about that because you are blocking a flush draw. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a bet. Alex, Alex does take advantage of that ace, thinking that people are probably afraid of it. And it looks like he took down took the down. Uh, 39. Yeah. yeah. Nice play there. Sometimes I'll take advantage of that ace popping up on the river if it's probably one on one. If it's a multi way pot, I'll have to think about it. Uh, but with uh, it, it, it kind of depends on the dynamics. Yeah. But sometimes I'll take a stab at a pot like that, uh, especially no. if it checks over to me. Yeah, no, there's definitely wrong with that. Definitely nothing wrong with that. Sorry, I said wrong with that when <laughs> I meant there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing like your brain working. Dave with sevens raises to seven. Hey, wonder where I got that. He <laughs> found Jesus. Seven, seven, seven. Where's Chris Ferguson at when you need him? All right. Looks like Stewart. I won't bring him up again. Uh, <laughs> Offsuit queen ten. Three bets at the twenty-five. Now in one three, is this pretty standard play that you see regularly here? Like, well, I um, sometimes if people want to start getting active, queen ten. It's Broadway. Yeah. Broadway hand. So Dave does find a set here, and he quickly uh, checks it. Yeah, Queen Ten did not connect at all, and we'll see. Uh, I like that check though, because he knew Stewart was taking the bet lead. That King could have helped him. He could have done with Ace King, King Queen. Yeah, there's all kinds of kings in Stewart's hand that he could have. Yeah. Well, and uh, Dave with uh, the check raise, and Stewart quickly folds. Yeah. He quickly realized he stepped in some poopy and realized, yeah. like, this is not my place and I should be somewhere else. Well, even with, with that set, of course, he had a checking there as the right option. Even if he didn't hit anything, I think he basically had to check almost all your hands there. Yeah. Yeah. But he hit his seven. Pocket sevens, bet seven, hit a seven. So seven themed hand from okay so if you have eights then you bet eight <laughs> and you hit your eight that's how it works let's see if he let's see if he's if, if that's on his mind here right. I like this so you bet your you bet your set number so if you have jacks <laughs> would that be an 11 I well I I wouldn't do it but I think he had seven on his mind so <laughs> so I think this was live sixth and uh, King Jack is the first to uh, yeah, King Jack pops to 25, Stewart. No, Jeremy, it looks like, yeah, King Jack does, and Jeremy's going to come along with the ace four of spades. There's a four that could have gotten in. Now, uh, G-Man and off. the small blind. Yeah. Now, I'm raising here every time. I Are, think so, too. What are your thoughts? No, I would, I would raise here, too. Um, it, it's a, it, just, it was a, it, it was a live hand. Someone like a three could, could go over the top on that with anything. And you do have a premium hand, and you're also kind of clarify the range of your opponents for anyone who calls. Yeah. And reevaluate if someone four bets you. No, definitely agree. I also, and I hate, 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 hate playing a hand out of the small blind against, you know, anybody. So I prefer to try to take it down when I can for the lead, you know, yeah. like. And even if he doesn't take it down and someone just smooth calls it, you eliminate a lot of random probably trash hands yeah uh, like that Ace and four. you narrow it down to you know jacks will call you tens will call you yeah probably down to fives will call you and I, you're you're above ace queen with, with which would probably smooth call you ace jack suited ace 10 jack or ace 10 suited would call you and you're ahead of those yeah now, and you'll get four bedded with aces kings or and queens do probably. you think you're polarizing your hand when you doing that in the small blind i uh, you 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 can but i think for you you take the bet lead and you also kind I mean, of narrow down the range of anyone who just calls. Yeah. I mean, but do you think the other players are thinking that you might be stealing, or do you think that, like... Yeah, with, with <laughs> dynamics, you, you always can. Uh, but I think you're also saying, I have a good hand. What yeah. Do you want to tango with me? I have a good hand. Get out of my pot. Yeah, but good hand could be sixes through tens, jacks through aces, yeah. ace king suited, ace queen suited. So you don't think that was a spot for a squeeze necessarily? I mean, there wasn't really enough money in the pot. Yeah. Or there was squeeze worthy, or bluff worthy, yeah. I should say. Yeah, I, 
I don't think so. I mean, potentially, yes. And uh, Jeremy takes down this hand with trip aces. Yeah, no, he nailed it with ace-10 there and uh, wasn't going to get any action from jack-9, so that was quickly got away. I believe every dealer change we do do a bomb pot. And, uh, yeah, there's our chip count for the evening. And we've already had a 1K pot go down. And, yeah. Uh, well, I like to adjust my line to maybe 2K pot will be the big pot go. of the, you know. That was a rookie mistake, I think, for me saying, oh, yeah, it'll be a $800 pot will be the big yeah. Big pot. No, no. The one, the regular one three is a hair smaller than this game, but this game can get ginormous, yeah. and uh, we're liable to see some of that tonight. And that's always what makes Stones Live so exciting. So uh, like, subscribe, and if you, you know, just yeah, or come well, down and play. Exactly. Also, there's a lot of good stuff coming up that I might talk about now while we're uh, yeah. Here we go. So uh, we've got the big game splash pot tournament which is uh, February 3rd at 3.30. Now, this tournament's interesting because uh, $25 out of every entry goes to the splash pool, and every table gets a $50 splash if, and that's 50 real dollars in a tournament, if somebody scores a touchdown on Sunday for whatever game is going on. And it's every $25 of a field goal is scored that's splashed every pot until the pool is empty. Now, if there's still money in the pool, at the end of it, the... Goes back into the prize pool, I think, Yeah, right? it goes back into the prize pool at the end of it. What? So if it's like a low-scoring game, that money goes back to, you know, first, or the pool. And that's actually quite cool. Then, of course, we have the Quantum, February 4th through February 10th, which is always an amazing tournament. Highly recommended by everybody. I've pumped it up enough that anybody who has watched any stream with me knows that I am a quantum fanatic. And, uh... Well, I'll be playing with you on that one, so... All right. Challenge accepted. There we go. Yeah. No, I think last time you had aces cracked at the Sunday final table. That was the first time where I met you. Oh, yeah. And that was, uh... I, I had a rough go at that one. Uh, yeah. Best hands. I, actually, I think the theme of that table, not just for me, but for the table... If you had the best hand on a flop or pre-flop, it doesn't matter. The turn in river is going to catch up the person who's behind. No, that was the first time on stream I had actually used the mountain handle. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah that's when and, I met Tom. And everybody was making fun of me for like, this is the skinniest guy <laughs> in the world. And he's got this handle that's some huge dude from Game of Thrones. Oh. And, uh... Well, we got knocked out together in that in that tournament. I don't know if you Yeah, if no, you it that. was uh we it was third and fourth. Yeah. And I think I, I was slightly out chipped. Oh you, you more than out you more yeah. than slightly. I was I was I, pretty low I was low stacked in that. And I took a gamble with Ace Queen against uh a that pair. I the, forget what, uh Pocket tens or something like C1. that? C one. I think yeah. it was pocket nines. Nines, yeah. Yeah. So you were coin flipping. Yeah, I was flipping for your stack and the fifth place's stack because there was wasn't there some? There was, wasn't There's there a really short stack. Yeah, there was, it was a really odd place. Ooh. Well, it so, looks like this hand's a Bruin. G Man uh, with pocket aces again. Raises a 31. Let's see what, how did the shapes just, are from. Did you just open the 31 straight? Uh, no, it looks ooh. like uh, he takes down the, just the little. Oh, poor G Man. He finally gets his aces after his queens have been stomped by aces and his queens have, you know, his tens have been stomped and he gets a measly four bucks for aces. May have been 15 bucks, but either way, after you're stuck like he's been stuck, that's kind of a crappy start. I mean, it's not a good feeling in the gut. To but G-Man's playing good. I, those yeah. are... No, he did lay down it's just the queens. It's just the deck... That's sometimes a deck uh, kind of puts your best hands fall way behind, like flop deuces flop in uh, a full boat on you. Yeah. And so Dave opened with uh, Hop Grenade's favorite hand, Ace Queen, to twenty dollars, and Mark G with Ace Jack suited, which is highly dominated by Ace Queen, is going to come along, and. Uh, I Jeremy. just throwed out that highly dominated for uh, the ace queen hater that's in our commentating house. Ooh. Three clubs roll out. Now, Dave's queen of clubs. Mm -hmm. Is this worth uh, <coughs> continuing with, you think? I think so. Yeah. Uh, 
see where other opponents are at. If someone doesn't have a club like Mark, uh, kind of put him to test to see where he's at. Yeah, the ace jack is gone unless he turns his hand into a to bluff. bluff. Yeah. He lets it go. Jeremy does have top pair. And if he's putting Dave on just one club, and sick, <laughs> Dave hits his, and Jeremy also hits top two pair. Looks yeah. so like it goes check check. So we have a uh, four card flush for Dave, and uh, Jeremy does have top two pair, and I believe he should probably go for thin value. I mean, like, what would you go like thirty five to forty five? If he wants to try to make it look like a steal, he can get more creative and go bigger. Yeah, no, that actually makes sense to sort of put bet a hundred or six, you know so something you, a little larger. Looks like a bet was sixty-five, and Jeremy with top two makes the call. Wow! So uh, yeah, Dave picked up an extra sixty-five bucks there. That was a good bet sizing good bet. because he actually uh, made the bet sizing yeah. there. Maybe Jeremy uh, was probably too strong on that with top two, or didn't put him on a on a club and thought he was trying to steal it. Yeah. The way he'd been playing, um, I would I would definitely put steel there in the possibility. Oh, yeah. You know, in the possibility. Uh, it doesn't look like they're doing bomb pots this evening, but, uh, yeah, no, make sure you guys check out the uh, Stones Live calendar. We do have a bunch of good stuff coming up. Um, uh, yeah, no, we've got PLO on the 25th. The 550 buy-in sit and go on the uh, 26th, and then of course the last Sunday term on the 27th. I think I'll be joining on that one too. Yeah, yeah, no, that one's a tons of fun. You agree with me though that that is the best structured, best $300. I, I love it. Uh, it it's great. Um, it the structure is great. The timing is great. Um, it's a marathon session though. If you do take it all the way to the end, but yeah. That's where you're here. You're here to play poker. Yeah. No. So you're happy with the 40 minute levels like I am. I'm. I'm. I love that structure. And, yeah. And and walk in there knowing that's what it's going to be. That's that's good. So uh, don't change that. <laughs> don't ever change that. So we have an interesting flop. Ace five four four two. So it's check check and G man with the five. Sully is back. Uh, we're actually going to turn that into maybe a uh, something that we do at the end of the stream. So, uh, you know, it's going to be, but it's going to be later. So I apologize to you, but it will be later. And uh, I'm talking about the uh, marbles, if anybody's <laughs> asking. Yeah, no, there's the quantum right there. Uh, February 4th through 10th, uh, $120 flights, 10% of the bags. Now, if you double bag, the sick part is is you get $900 for your second bag. And that is amazing because your first bag, you get 240 bucks. That's already, you cashed, right? And your second, like, your second bag, wah, is $900. Oh, it looks like we're going marbles now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we really? No. I, Why even on there? I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> Somebody has taken over our Twitch feed. There we go. Back That's to the. <laughs> I thought you guys were trying to haze me on my first my first go around wow. here. Yeah. All right. So we go into the flop. Oh, this is a sick hand brewing. Now uh, I see Whopper here with a pair and a straight draw versus yeah. the bottom set. G Man also has an up and downer. Does he as well? He does have a seven? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So he G Man has an overcard and a seven. And uh Backdoor has a or Backdoor has a gutter. If he hits a ten, he has the nuts as well. Like if you're Wap Bry, how do you play a hand like this? You have a pair and I I think you're he's doing the right thing. Fire a bet at it. He's betting one fifth pot or oh no, I'm sorry, he's he was betting the pot twenty five, yeah. got raised. Now, here what do you do? Uh, I I think with how deep Whopper is, Whopper is, you call and got rewarded with that call. Hit his straight. So now, do you? I think he had, Do you check such I a would, polarized hand, or do I you would still. Bet? I would do what I'm doing, what he's doing. Take a look at it, and then I would probably check here. Uh, betting out and taking a lead here. Oh, looks like he's going to take a lead. This is 
actually a better decision given the ha the way the hands are. Yeah. But uh, I think you're right that maybe a, a, you know. Not knowing that Stewart is so strong with the set. Uh, yeah. Because he can get boated out now. Yeah, he's got to get value in while he can, and this is the time to try to get value, right? Yeah. So he bets 140. And this is interesting, too, because a spade showed up on the turn. So that also makes any pair backdoor spade draw, like six, six seven of spades, eight, seven of spades, you know, like yeah, it, eight, ten of spades. Play. Looks like Stewart makes the call. Yeah, so 140 was called. And uh, a brick comes on the river. Yeah. And Wap right here, he's going to probably throw out another bet, of course, and he pre mucked. <laughs> you know, some, I, Stuart knew. I, I like that from Stuart. No, hodl, no Hollywooding. You, you know what you're going to do yeah. if a bet comes, and you know a bet's coming. That was so. the no BS. Yeah. I mean, Wap right, like, he, I think it worked out well for this hand for to lead out when he did hit his hand. Uh, sometimes I like to check to still disguise my hand, look like I'm afraid of that straight, and and get a bet out. If someone was weaker than than what Stewart had, which which was a set. Yeah. Uh, if Stewart had second pair or third pair there, uh, that bet would probably lose him. But Wapri played it perfectly for what Stewart had at that yeah. hand. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, like he he only gets value out of that because that set checks behind every time. I guarantee you. Yeah. you know I mean, like, not, absolutely, well, absolutely. Yeah, it could check behind or you know. maybe continue with that lead, but yeah. the the check would have been the safe play yeah. by that set. So on the button, Jeremy with Ace King uh, goes ahead and opens up and uh, probably isn't going to get any action from the old uh, five deuce or the and seven ten. Ten seven. The old ten seven might play just because he likes to play, and Dave does not. Pot's not big enough. And that's part of the problem there. That pot was uh, a little measly. And yeah, Jeremy Ace King. Takes down. Yeah, Ace King was the first and only to enter, open, and win. And uh, that happens quite a bit, actually. That uh, usually goes unseen if you ever watch like the World Series of Poker, ESPN or WPT. They only show you the gambling highlights. You know the like. And you know that's when I first started playing poker. They would only play the highlights on their on their episodes. I did not know that. I just assumed everyone had amazing hands and was bluffing <laughs> gigantic at all times. Um, yeah. Which didn't really help when I was first getting in when I was playing tw when I was 21. And the only only thing I had to go off of was WSOP highlights, basically. I believe it. The largest pot I ever won actually was right there. Just flashed. Five deuce suited. Five deuce of hearts, actually. Um, that is a, a story for another time, but another game. But, yeah, no. It's like backdoors going to raise a 20 with his ace nine offsuit. Ooh, does that ace jack just let go? Yeah, ace jack just quickly mocked. Look, I think he was out of position in the small blind and just gave up. Okay. I mean, I don't blame him, to yeah. be honest. I don't, I don't either. You know, it's it, the hand just is it's such a marginal hand that doesn't play well. It gets cremated by ace queen, ace king, and also it doesn't play well against garbage like you know four five five six seven eight. You know, obviously Alex here has the best hand, um, but uh, backdoor when the queen shows up has bet thirty five and Alex is not buying it and goes ahead and makes the call. And uh, we'll it goes see check here. check on the river. And Alex will take it down. So I know you're working on it, but uh, did you get one of these yet? No, I'm not getting one of these. Wow. It's just, uh, I always have to show it off every stream, uh, because it is the one <laughs> ring that controls them all. Well, I want to thank Tom for this gift that he's giving me, so thank you, Tom. I'll be <laughs> I'll be wearing this. Oh, this you're, is you're, you're welcome. Awesome. Anytime. Yeah. Now, uh... When was, uh, which event was this one? Uh, Omaha 8. Omaha has always been my specialty and uh, was able to finally make a big score in Omaha. Well, congrats, man. That's Thank you. Yeah, no, it was uh, tough. Tell the last three. The last three of us took five and a half hours over at Thunder. I mean, that is a long time. I think we averaged between the three of us eight bigs. Mm -hmm. 
or eight, oh. eight bets, eight big bets. So you're just shuffling around, but lasting that long, huh? Yeah. No, we were all playing really just like something else. But uh, and at this end, we got three people who going to the fifteen dollar flop. I got nine eight king queen and uh, six three. So uh, six three of diamonds connected. Nine eight Stewart big whiff and uh, backdoor nails the king queen. And uh, yeah. It's like it's from the cutoff here. Now uh, Stewart checks over. Oh, goes to check all around. Big boo boo. Uh, G man just binked his Yahtzee card. Another six on a rainbow board. And uh, back door feeling comfortable with his top pair. Yeah, he has a top pair and a really good kicker. He has the number two kicker to go with his hand. And uh, I'm curious to see how G man plays this here. Just a smooth call. That. I, I'm I'm okay with this, uh, keeping backdoor on the on the hook here. So backdoor again sees that the guy just G-man just called. So it probably feels comfortable. Leads out with 50. Now if you're G-man, I think with a four on the river, I think you could only get away with a min raise, maybe a min raise plus like 20 I, bucks. I think he heard you and did that. <laughs> Obviously, he can't hear you, but he, that's Peyton, that strategy that is just, is right. Yeah, that just means I happen to might know what I'm doing. And backdoor has to call there with the odds, I think. Yeah. So. No, G-Man basically just made a bet that forced uh, backdoor to uh, it turns to look him up. That one turned into a seventy dollar raise with so seventy dollars to call to win that pot of two ninety. That's uh, like four to one on yeah. that one. You just you just have to, even if you know your beat. Yeah, no. When you're at least four or five to one and you're has, has good showdown value, like, you kind of are stuck. You're in a really bad spot, but you're stuck. Yeah. You just... You have to call, knowing your beat, but hoping the one in four, one in five chance yeah. that you are ahead. See, what's funny is in a tournament, that's actually muckable because your oh, tournament absolutely. chips are much more valuable than your cash chips. Now, that sounds strange, but... You no, know, your your last chip is the most valuable chip, and it's about press uh, uh, preservation a lot of times in, in tournaments. Yeah, it's a last longer contest versus a uh, try to win money contest. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with you. Actually, that's <laughs> tournament. I'm definitely thinking about mucking there. Uh, yeah. Cash, I I have to shake my head and do a crying call. Yeah, and just say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, nice catch. Here you go. <laughs> Here's your money. Um, so Alex opened King Jack for 20. No, it was uh, somebody else opened, but uh, both these players nailed this flop. Oof. Now, if you're if you're Alex, you bet and you get raised. What do you do? Well, I think I think you would have to call you a top pair with a gutter. The queen makes you a straight as well if you got re if you got popped. Ay, ay, ay. That is a good and bad card for Alex. Dangerous board. Queen completes the straight. Uh, Wapra is still working with pair and flush draw. So flush has missed. Alex does have the best hand, and uh, Wapri actually, actually could turn his hand into a bluff. A, yeah, bluff potentially. I think Alex is going to take the betting round here. He's going to go ahead and try it for some some thin value. Yes. And to be honest, I'm check calling in this spot because I know I'm only being called by. By you know, better, or queen could have gotten yeah. there. Or. I'm gonna try to induce a bluff by check, by checking there. I mean, how do you? He, uh, yeah, no, I check. I think check call is, or depends how big the bet is after you checked him to evaluate. Uh, but you can, I guess, if you want to get creative, you could bet very thinly and hoping a second pair or a third pair calls. But if if they're not interested at all, they're mucking that, and you 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 also put yourself into a position where someone can raise you, and you just lost what yeah. you just put out there. So you like the idea of trying to induce a bet or, or induce a bluff by checking the river there. I, I'm okay with a, uh, a check there. A lot of hands beat you. Ace, ace queen yeah. gets there. Any kind of queen gets there. I kind of dislike the bet just because any hand that calls you has you beat. You've essentially turned your you turned your hand into a complete bluff, really, because yeah. a naked queen is only gonna flat you. Yeah. And you're not gonna get even a set is only gonna flat you. <laughs> yeah. Which is just the way it is. So uh, maybe a second pair or a third pair could have called possibly, but um, yeah, no, I'm sure there. Definitely true. Okay, we have all spade board. 
Sura King Queen offsuit backdoor hits a insider with a seven, but no spades. So this is actually interesting. Both players have a gut shot. Uh, King Queen obviously has a gut better gut shot, but nobody has a spade. And I think because there are no spades between these two players, that this pot is highly purchasable. And uh, it did just get purchased by uh, Mr. Bry there. So. And also that makes your insider or any any flush or any straight draw uh, a little bit cheaper, knowing that if spade hits, you're four spaded out. Yeah. And uh, your straight is pretty cheap there. Yeah. No. On uh, um, four flushed boards are you I mean I'll, I'll uh, always have my antenna up but sometimes I can pretend like I have it uh, but also that's where it gets dangerous people play it all kinds of ways once yeah. they have it your antenna up I like that <laughs> yeah you have to uh, explain that one so jack 10 is opened and uh, I think I think we've got live six going around I'm not sure but because uh, I consistently have seen the hijack throw out six six bucks and 7-4 uh, hit the flop pretty good. It's got top pair and a flush draw, or flop, blah, blah, straight draw. I know poker. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, yeah, Wapri so has a gutter as well, right? Eight makes his straight. Uh, he lets it go. Yeah. No, and uh, King hits the turn. Uh, this doesn't really help either player. But it is kind of a safe card for Jeremy because he's not getting called on the flop by too many, you know, by too many kings. Or pre-flop as well. I think ace-king yeah. is pumping you. Pocket king is obviously king-queen, king-queen suited. Yeah, because basically what's going on here is Jeremy's betting, and he's thinking his opponent, or Stewart is calling, thinking his opponent is just on a draw. Now, that is a really terrible card for... Uh, Wow, Jeremy hits his straight. Stuart and Jeremy. And I say that because, like, Jeremy can now be bought. Like, and so Jeremy throws out a bet, and we'll see if Stuart detects if his antenna is <laughs> up, as you said, and uh, can detect that, like, whoo. Oh, I wonder he if he, he does ship. He turns hand. his hand into a bluff and makes it into a move. How do you feel about this? I, I, I like it if, if Jeremy didn't have a straight. <laughs> <laughs> Looks uh, like Jeremy just snap called and took it down. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're pushing out a lot of hands. A flush draw misses. You could push out a king. I think you're allowed to. You can push out yeah. a king queen there, ace queen, ace king, depending on how deep you are. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. I but think, it wasn't as deep. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was gonna say like. Actually, I think we were on the same sort of wavelength there when it comes to uh, if these players were deeper in that hand, that Absolutely. works. Yeah, if, they had, if yeah. you had maybe 500 behind or a few hundred more behind, yeah. that would definitely work, I yeah, think. Yeah, it wasn't quite deep enough to get him off the four there. That's uh, that's some, some interesting poker. I think what you could push off was an ace-high flush draw that missed and was firing the river, and your shove yeah. would make them fold. Set that's two probably. Pairs. Yeah, I think two pair you would have. I think you'd still have to probably call there, right? I don't know. Well, definitely he was not folding the straight. Yeah. He probably could have, maybe he could have pushed off a two pair. It depends how he's feeling right there. Yeah. And what's funny is in a tournament that I'm sh absolutely positive that that would have. Could have worked. Yeah. Could have really worked. This is interesting here. So you want to go ahead and. Uh, yeah. So pocket sevens for Dave raises to 20. Alex with ace king offsuit three bets him to 60 three x's him Stuart lets it go so uh what do you think about this one here i mean uh let's see who has position on him uh so alex has position on him yeah well dave took the lead and hits his set <laughs> so he has two options here you can check you can bet he checks it so alex having the ace of spades he knows his opponent isn't on an ace high flush draw uh, so that that's, might factor in so that's that's really good to point out here yeah that's kind of an issue with Alex's hand, it makes it feel much weaker, yeah. in a sense. And it looked like... Uh, well, Alex is firing away, bet 60. Into a set. There's nothing like betting into a set and then seeing it later and going, oh, 
what did yeah. I do? Well, Dave does have, he's up against a potential straight draw. He's up against a potential flush draw. So he could smooth call here or raise to protect his hand against potentially those hands. Obviously, yeah. we see Alex has a backdoor flush draw. So he goes with a smooth call. And now he may have just trapped himself. Yeah. Or actually not trapped himself, but he basically uh, gave Alex another reason to stay in. Yeah, hand. now he built in a lot of equity off that turn for Alex. Now has the ace high flush draw and the betting lead and takes the lead. Now this is this looks strong. And Dave now with a set, although we know he's far ahead here. Yeah. If you're I, Dave, you are you ever considering a set of jacks? I mean, I'm never considering a set of jacks. Yeah, pro probably not. I, I might be considering a jack and some spades. I'm putting on potential spades here. Yeah. Um, I mean, this looks like a... To me, this looks like a flush from Alex. Yeah. I mean, it's really... He let out. Uh, a lot of people lead out with your flush draws, especially ace high flush draw, king high flush draw. Yeah. And no. this completes it. Absolutely agree. And it looks like oh, he did what a river. Dave gets a uh, a comfortable river. Yes. Uh, gets him a, a full house. Seven's full of deuces. Yeah. Now so, we know that his hand is good no matter. Well, there's only really two hands that beat him, pocket deuces or pocket jacks. And I think it went check, check. Check, check. Yeah. Maybe Dave... Uh, Either got spooked with the jack thing, pocket jacks, or he tried to check to induce, knowing that I, Alex was leading the whole way. Yeah, I think he was trying to do, induce, induce a bluff, and Alex gave up. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a trap that was set that the animal did not walk into. Uh, no offense, I'm not calling the player an animal, but yeah, no, that was. Uh, but relive in that hand, I do like that check when you have that boat because the other player is repping spades so checking to them you ace high yeah. flush draw or ace high flush probably is betting king high flush draw is betting for value and you had someone yeah you give them a it. chance to just ring them because it. it has to be a big bet right yeah so I, I'm okay with that check I know the results for this one hand um, he, he didn't win any value off that yeah. off the boat but I think over time okay um, well, his cards have reversed now, and uh, yeah. he has the opposite ace king. And, uh, he opens to twenty five instead of twenty, so eight six of spades immediately comes along for twenty five. How do you feel about playing the like, suited gap? Yeah, the mm. suited gapper here. Well, he has position on him. Uh, it's kind of I, but my I I would I feel like I would do this if I were deeper, but you know, it's kind of a weird spot. Just not. I don't feel he's necessarily deep enough to to do that but if if but if alex is comfortable playing these type of hands and this is his game then i'm i'm more than okay with him doing this yeah okay well alex has flopped second pair uh backdoor has the best hand with king jack now uh Ooh, and there we go do you check this flop do you bet this flop i mean well backdoor it went check to him so he should feel comfortable with his top pair obviously he is beat now yeah, um, so in other words, him not betting there may have just cost him the pot. Awesome, yeah. But yeah. It's, Ace King, obviously, Dave is going to give up at this point unless he just. It's one of those beautiful pre cute. beautiful pre flop and flop and turn didn't help you. So, Alex here, he can do both, I feel like. He can, he can check, he can raise, and he raised to 140. Yeah, no, he does pop it. And I actually really like this because it kind of po makes your hand look like a flush draw maybe it could, but at the same time it's like it hey, could be a lot of things you know i don't know where i'm at i need to find out kind of thing also the six is very disguised it is two pair yeah. makes him pretty strong and uh, it, it it's confusing to, um, to be very strong on that six yeah no, exactly. I mean, like, the six is a blank card to King Jack, and uh, if you're the player, I think I'm There's... Jack calling most non-diamond rivers. Yeah, and he, Alex boats up. A river. Alex just binked the money card, and now it's a question of how much money can he get out of back door here, and it looks like he's going to fire off a hundred and... I like uh, this bet. Yeah, I, I, I do because you, you I bet 220, my apologies. I missed the extra chip that was in there. I like this because backdoor called the turn. Um, Thank you. So Alex might be thinking that backdoor is probably has what he has, top pair. And 
gets the value call. Do wow. Yeah, he got wow, his call. Wow. So this was another uh, $1,000 pot? Yeah. 723, I think. Yeah. 773. It was $50 off on seat nine. So $773 ha. pot. It's close. No, so uh, thank you guys for watching Stones Live again. Uh, subscribe, like, do all those things. Uh, we're here for you guys. We are like doing this literally, totally for our audience and to get players some exposure on camera, yeah. along with you know, like, and it's just. Well, I'm just here to cool hang thing. out with a World Series of Poker circuit <laughs> champion, 2019 champion. Uh, Was it 2019? No, right? 2018. 2018. No, 2018 December. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, you're, so that's last year. You're old news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave me alone. No, uh, shoot. I've been playing cards for so long that uh, I remember when Pat Lyons was the Joker at uh, uh, what you call it, the Shooting Star at Bay One One before they moved. Uh, I've never been to the new facility, so I can't. I don't really have an opinion, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really venture. Bay off, uh, often for poker. Uh, yeah. If I do, no, it'll but, be uh, Vegas, LA. I do love this place, though. Yeah. Stones is, S Stones is home base. Yeah. All Dude. right. Looks like we have. Is that family pot? One, two, three. This a uh, bomb pot finally? Did we get a bomb pot going? I think this is a bomb pot. Um. A bomb pot is where everybody puts in a certain amount of money and they go straight to the flop, no questions asked. And uh, with the amount of hands involved, this looks like it potentially could be. Um, well, Lopri has king high flush draw, and so he called. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can't ask for really better. Um, obviously, 1080 is dreaming. <laughs> but G-Man has second pair. Yeah, and in a bomb pot, you're, you know, it's random cards. I mean, you really have, it's difficult to put your hand, opponent oh. on a hand. And Dave hits the magic nine to give him a straight. Wow. And just took control of the hand. Just wow. And it went check, checked him. He bets away. Wapri is not working with, with anything, so he lets it go. G-Man, don't yeah. blame him for that call. He's got to make the call. I mean, it's a, such a cheap bet for such a big pot. And, yeah. It was a was it twenty five dollars to win yeah, one nut for like two ten, something along those lines. And yeah, no, if I were G man, I would make that call too. That's just one of those spots that it's, you're it's just one, like. Well, again, what we we're saying, like it was an eight to one call <laughs> again, and you just eight to one equity, something like that, right? Yeah, twenty five to win yeah, two ten. That's pretty crazy. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's just it's one of those things you just you know your beat. Unreal. Mm, majority of the time, and the odds are like if you can win, if if you're winning one out of eight of those, you you gotta you gotta call. Yeah, no, definitely agree. Uh, All right, Mark G with some suited connectors, eight nine, fun little hand. Calls eight. If you excuse me for a moment, yeah. would you like anything from the? I'm I'm good. All right. Let's go. All right. Jeremy with the call of 5-8. Backdoor with uh, suited ace 10. Also with the clubs. Dave with 10-7. Comes along. 9-4 queen with two hearts. Not too much with anyone working with anything other than Mark G, who hits second pair here. So we have a check all around, and hearts get there. Dave's the only one with a heart here. Uh, Mark's still in the lead with a second pair. Uh, Dave is going to fire with his 10 high flush draw. $16 into it. Basically checking to see where he is. Mark makes the call. And then back to our nut. Working with too much lets it go as well. There we go to the river. And Dave hits his flush. Uh, with the ace and queen on board, uh, only two hands beat him. The king uh, the king of hearts and the jack of hearts. So he's sitting on the third best hand right now. 
He checks it over to Mark. And looks like it went check, check. And Dave takes down that pot. And off we go to the races. Another hand to go. Nice to see you. Welcome to the chat. Uh, I didn't see you there before. Uh, don't know if you've been there, but Stone's Live Poker. Yeah, for sure. Stone's Live Poker. We are at Roseville's finest. Is this Roseville? Citrus Heights. Citrus Heights. My apologies. Citrus Heights and Roseville are like one side of the freeway, other side of the freeway. Um, we're just outside of Sacramento. And uh, yeah, no, this place is uh, fantastic. I mean, like, it was literally a great restaurant that somebody had the bright idea to connect a bunch of the stuff, you know, and just, yeah. I mean, this place, the chairs, Every table has a USB. We have cards with RFID readers that give you points for playing for hours. And something I'd like to mention that's super important, our limit jackpot is over 200 and something grand. It's like 234, 235 grand. Third, all right, 236 grand. My apologies. <laughs> um, that's the $236,000. That's almost life-changing money. Uh, like, just... That's so, that's unbelievable. I mean, how can you not? I haven't seen a jackpot that big almost anywhere, really. Actually, I haven't seen a jackpot that big. Come to think about it, yeah, no, I don't think I have. That was uh, my thinking face. I'll do that again there. <laughs> so if I'm making that face at the poker table, that means I'm deciding. Um, it's not a tell, it's just a thinking, you know. I, do you You're think there, is there a difference between thinking and tells? That's actually a good question. Uh, sometimes a thinking face is a tell. I feel like people calculating odds or if, uh, on it. Nope, agree with that. Sorry about that, folks. I uh, had a little bit of uh, chat reading and back reading to do to make sure I didn't miss anything for the folks watching. So Jeremy here does have uh, open ender with a pair of tens, and uh, Dave has open ender with now a flush draw. So hell of an equity card for Dave. So flush draw, straight draw, and it looks like Dave's gonna fire up a bit. Yeah. So in this situation, uh, what do you think is the best way to go about it here? I mean, this is this is a tough spot for both players because they both have monster draws. One's got a made draw, of it, or what I call a made pair. I mean, yeah, what are your thoughts here? That's right. Uh, I think Dave with the uh, the lead out. He's trying to he's trying to take it down here, and I I do like that bet. But Jeremy with the call here. Okay. So. It's bricked out river for both players. Now, um, it looks like all in and a fold. Dave went all in. Yeah, and Jeremy, or he does take it down with a, a missed draw. That's and a, the show, he showed at the end. It's a, oh, nice. I like, that's that, great. <laughs> uh, you know that, although the, the, the raise on the river, wow. Only thought about it for a few seconds before mucking it, but yeah. absolutely polarizing hand. It's over bet into the pot. It makes you think the guy either has a gigantic hand or nothing. And uh, if you if if I was in that position and someone fired that big at me, think about it. If I had something, but if you had nothing, you can let it go. But yeah, it's one of those thinking hands. If you did have a it two pair or a set top pair, yeah, it takes a hero to make that call there for sure, most definitely, and. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I was just trying to ask you how you feel about betting in that, you know, that hand and the way, like, 
you know, when you turn the flush draw, do you take the lead? Do you? Well, he do, that wasn't that that card gave him oh, a lot of equity. It gave him a lot of equities. You know, it turned his up and downer to a up and downer plus a plus a flush draw. Okay. So I I do like that bet, and I, and he didn't connect on the river. He still had the betting lead. Best way to for him to win right there, uh, with just a high card, is to, to okay. bet. So I, yeah, doll and no. shove is a little creative and a little different, but I think betting there probably was the right move. Dangerous, there. but yeah. So it looks like we got a, a big hand brewing. You want to uh, take over for this one for me? Sure. All right, Alex with pocket jacks. Three bets to one twenty. Sorry, guys, I'm not feeling too good for the day. So. What, what do you think about pocket nines here? Now, if you had nines. If I had nines, what would I do? This is actually a really good question. So it's been three bet, and I have nines. I'm not set mining. I don't mind the fold, Yeah. actually. Don't. You know, he didn't give me the odds to set mine. Um, I think I just let it go. I mean, like... It's, it's the loss that makes it more important to me. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. like, if I've only put in 15 bucks, I mean, like, psh, no problem. Look. You know, take it. I'll fight you later, you know? Like, yeah, you're not deep enough to go set mining on that one, I think, with that, that bet. Yeah, I mean, that's like, you know, pick your spots, right? You know, like the... Just... Uh, At best, you probably think you're coin flipping, but dominated by 10s and up. Yeah. But, uh, you, I mean, obviously, if you do make the call, you are set mining, but you have to make sure that, like, you can win at least 8 to 1 or 9 to 1, right? I mean, yeah. it, that just, you know, my ratios are right, I think. Chat, correct me if I'm wrong, or Robbie. Oh, for, for set mining? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think I mean, it's like, like 9 to 1 type. For equity? Yeah. Yeah. And you're just praying for 8 high board, I assume. Like, <laughs> just, if the other person has ace king or ace queen, you're just praying for an 8 high board with your pocket nines being over. Yeah. Over pair. No, that's just a that's just, just a crappy spot. I mean, that's a cooler. So, uh, Wattbright has formed, popped top two against the old ten deuce, the old, the old dual Brunson, and uh, looks like uh, ten deuce is going to go ahead and fire out a little bit. And uh, I have a feeling this is going to get bet fold. Yep. No. I think he flashed the deuce. Yep. All right. Now, how do you feel about the uh, the bluff show? I mean, like, what is, is that something that 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 you do or? Well, I, everyone here is is pretty strong players. Uh, yeah. I think the show and the bluff uh, to try to get someone on tilt. Um, I, it's not usually in my wheelhouse, but it's in a lot of people's wheelhouses. Is that like the, I'm going to stick it in you, you, <laughs> well, you kind of reference? Like. I, you know, every, I, I'm not susceptible, I am susceptible to it if I got bluff shoved and it was a okay. very, if it was on the margins and I muck, um, and it's a big pot to me, Yeah. Uh, that sometimes it does bother me. Also, but it's two two things for him when he bluff show or when he, when he shows his bluff is you can also advertise saying, uh, I'm not as tight as you think I am and try to make money down the line. Yeah. Okay. No, that's, that's you know, reasons to do it. Did I? I don't think I ever showed any of my... No, I did because I wanted to flaunt it against that one particular player in seat one. I don't know if you remember seat one, but him and I have just... Every time we are in a final table together, we... Go battle at each You guys had some big hands. Yeah, we just go crazy. Oh, this is a disgusting wow. hand. My apologies for the excitement, but we have a flopped flush from Dave. Uh, G-Man has a two double gutter and a top pair from... Uh, top two for Wapri. Top two for Wapri. So, uh, oh, the queen makes... G-Man makes the nutter butter. <laughs> But he's smashed by the diamonds. And uh, this is a worst-case scenario for G-Man. And uh, he takes the lead. And uh, if you're walking right here, do you make a bet? I mean, uh, do you, or if you're Dave, do you make a, a raise with a flush here? Or do you just flat? 
Well, second high, or second best hand, other than the ace high flush, I, I like the smooth call, knowing that it's multi-way action. Okay. And that's actually a pretty safe, King Jack can find a fold on that card. Well, I don't, it's kind of interesting. I mean, this pot size is really too small. All three of these players are trapping each other. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. And, uh... All three hands are strong. You have a straight two pair versus second nut flush. And this is the problem with trapping. I mean, you could be trapping the trap. Yeah. And when you're trapping the trap, you're saving yourself money in a way, but at the same time, you're losing money, equity money. So we did get a bet and a call on the river, and, uh... That pot was way smaller than it should have been. Well, that, that river bet was quarter pot. Yeah. So I think he was trying to get value off of that one. And everyone else came along. There was too strong to to fold, but not strong enough to repop them. So yeah. takes down a okay size pot. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. Uh, if you want to head out for anything, I got it for here. For okay, you're right. right back. Yeah, no, I'm going to give uh, my uh, fellow guest commentator for the evening and hopefully uh, regular commentator. We'll, uh, it's going to take a little little break for the moment. And it looks like we're, Jenna is uh, doing some magic. She's taking some photos of the uh, player who's just sitting down in seat seven. I do believe he dropped... Uh, thousand to start that was uh thank you to the back room for letting me know i'm an idiot and can't count the bills from here okay yeah no so he does have uh a thousand sitting in front of him the chip count is correct dave is still crushing this game at 2.1k um and yeah, no, we're having definitely a one two good one two three game. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the uh, commentary and the stuff that's going on here. Just uh, yeah. Uh, there were the pots over five hundred, by the way. So I'm not sure if they're doing bomb pots. Did they have? They just have a dealer change. They just had a dealer change. Yeah. No bomb pot. In my opinion, uh, bomb pots are like slot machines. So they're not my personal favorite, but uh, a lot of people like them. So, I mean, depends on obviously the lineup as to whether or not they happen. Uh, this one is not a regular thing. So, uh... First hand to open here is uh, King, no, Queen 10, maybe. Looks like this just gets down to the blinds, and uh, Queen 10 is going to fire out 20 and get called by 3-6 uh, suited. Uh, backdoor has flopped the Queen, and Alex has flopped a gut shot. So this is interesting. He's got flopped a gut shot and a rear flush draw, and uh, backdoor has top pair. So we'll see how this progresses. Um, if I'm backdoor, I am betting pot against whatever is led into me. Because it's small blind versus big blind. And in this is the only spot where the big blind has position. And to be honest, I know it's really scary, but like... Oh, no, I have this backwards. Uh, it looks like backdoor bet called. And uh, Alex was the one who made the raise. Um, same thing. I don't mind the raise at all. Now it's a question of whether or not backdoor decides to continue this line. He's... Er, not in line to whether not to continue. Um, he has top pair of the flush. The front, the front door flush draw did get there. Um, 
as you can see, the Knight of Spades. It's a really terrible card for his hand. And, uh, yeah, no, I like to give up there. Even though he has the best hand, it's just there's so many rivers that you don't like. I mean, there's so much saltiness to that board. There's so much that beats you. It's just not a good spot. And, uh... Yeah, no, the pot continues. Well, Robbie, you didn't miss much. Uh, you missed a little blind versus button action. It was actually blind versus blind action, but it wasn't huh. wasn't too exciting. Didn't get too crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was it was exciting, but it wasn't wasn't super exciting. It wasn't like 1.5k. Uh, didn't didn't hit the the magic number of where we're we going 2k now. Yeah, 2000 is the high spot. My over under is on 1.5k. And uh, that's actually small for a 1-3 game. This is actually, in your opinion, I mean, in my opinion, this is playing pretty soft for this game in particular. Yeah. Or that's... not soft, rather, but mellow. Careful, I guess, would be a word. Well, spots like blind on blind, you can sometimes you get a little leveling on each other action, you know, but yeah. uh, especially in tournament plays. Yeah. Linear cash game, uh, looks like they're playing pretty straightforward on it. Oh, that makes sense. So Alex has ace queen and a really bad board for his ace queen. Uh, Dave has top pair with a jack and uh, didn't really help either player. And that card also neither player really likes at all. Now the jack does make Dave's hand much stronger, but still any nine beats him, any flush beats him. I mean, like he's like, leading out though. Betting with 20. Maybe that's designed to get a, an 8 to call or a 7 to call, a 10 to call. A curiosity call, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Just to look him up. Do you think that's a defensive bet to say, like, don't raise me if you have a flush? Don't well, raise me if you have a... It, well, it, it, it did work here, uh, but it, it could be a, a defensive bet, but it also could be designed to get second pair to call, third pair to call, or someone who's just curious. Uh, and if you get raised there, you have to reevaluate yeah. what you're at. But oh, here, sense. results for this hand, it, it worked out perfectly for him. Got got value off the hand, off uh, ace high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, daddy did. This is, uh... Quite a lot of fun, you have to say. Yeah. Do you uh, find yourself some dinner? You know, I'm I'm gonna have uh, some more food later on. I love this place for for food. Is it just incredible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, duck tacos has always been like my standard go-to. Um, sliders, when it gets a little Ooh. cold, pho is sometimes my go-to as well. I think I'm gonna do. That's a good idea. I'm gonna do the salt and pepper prawns. That actually sounds pretty good. Yeah. Do a little something different. All right, change it up. Yeah. All the, and we did get new menus here. I think about a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago. I think. Did we? Yeah. Uh, new menus. Couldn't have changed for the worse. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're a wine guy, so they've. I think they might have changed up their wine selection I too. Was. I do remember that stream. I was drinking on stream on the summer. That was when they were still uh, commentating that tournament. Yeah. And I remember I was just relaxed, just getting drunk while I was. And playing I, the final table. I tried to file that away as some kind of tell. Obviously, it didn't work because it, it, you gave nothing away with that. But my mind is like, oh, this guy is a wine drinker. He's probably has some money behind him. Just re he's the most relaxed here. Uh, uh, I try to keep an eye how much wine you had, but didn't really. I think you just had one. And no, it was just I. I think I had three for the whole tournament, and yeah. it was just very level. You know. Well, I, tr I treat it as a sign as you were probably the most relaxed at the table then if you're oh, you know, well, switching nice. around a wine, yeah. just doing your thing, what, what winos usually do. I gotta remember that. Yeah, so if I'm like, you know, pretending to be a yuppie, um, I can uh, basically fake. That's probably my first impression of you was you drinking yeah. wine at the final table <laughs> at like one in the morning. Uh, awesome. All right, gotta remember that. Yeah, no, the, uh... All right, three-way pot. Ooh, great nice. flop for David. Flop. And flop. Yeah. They both flopped monsters. Um, David D here with Ace King of Spades. I love his hand. And 
this is a sneaky hand. Yeah, spades gets there, a jack gets there. Yeah. Ace he, or king. Just gives it up. And I think he just gives it up because there's a front door flush draw. Yeah. And he knows that kills most of his outs. I mean, like, when you play in, in situations like that for you, I mean, do you find that, like, having the front door flush be there affect how much you decide to draw? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm probably not going to fold to one bet. Uh, yeah. I can take the betting lead there. If I get a smooth call, I'm feeling pretty good to see what a turn comes out of. Uh, if I bet and I get raised there, I still have pretty good equity with that ace-king suited to stick around. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great flop that yeah. you can have with ace-king suited. Okay. Now you have to give me some insight because, uh, yeah, no, I, like I said, I'm more tournaments, always tournaments, you know, tournament, 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 tournament. And uh, I know you play a little bit of cash as well as tournaments, so uh, yeah, yeah. For and that I, one, you also the inside straight draw. Your uh, top pair can make it good as well. Ace, a king, any spade, any jack. Yeah. Also, there's a uh, odds that your ace high might be good there as well. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Uh, hmm. if you're up against a straight draw or okay. or yeah. another flush draw. Well, this sounds interesting. We have two players with a flush draw. One G man with the worst flush draw in a gutter ball. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. we're gonna have fireworks here. G Man with hitting the six high flush, oh. Alex with the, the second nut flush, right? Queen high, yeah. And actually, I like Alex's choice to lead here. How do you feel about him leading into the flush? I'm okay with, with this. Uh, G Man can also have a flush, he could also have uh, some kind of king with a spade. Uh, I could have offsuit king with a queen of spades. His bet Although he has kind a, of forces, jack of spades. Yeah, I was going to say, doesn't his bet kind of force G-Man to raise? And, yeah, he induces, if someone has a flush, it induces a raise there as well. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the the principle that I was yeah, really Alec, getting at. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good bet uh, by Alex. What a blank for a river. Um, uh, so... I'm assuming G-Man is now in check call mode. He might lead out here though, because uh, you you also have a flush. He did. Yeah. He so G-Man has to lead out. Yeah. Wow. Surprise to me. Goes to show. I need more cash game experience. See, with, with G-Man, because with Alex just doing a smooth call on the turn, you're feeling pretty comfortable with the flush. You could then comfortably put Alex in a lot of ranges where your six high flush beats you. Ace King offsuit, King Queen offsuit, King Jack offsuit. Uh, a funky two pair could have gotten there. Yeah. Um, a straight sure. draw or, or some other kind of crazy draw. What's sick was uh, G Man was actually raised 220, so it was 320 for him, you know, in total on the river there, and he threw it away. Oh, G Man let it go on that yeah. one. Oh, yeah, he let so. it go on the river. And uh, that's actually a really disciplined hold. That's nice, nice play, G Man. You, are, sir, are running like garbage and playing great. Yeah, that, I, I must have. Missed seeing that. I thought G Man was leading out. Yeah. But uh, no, it's one hell of a fold there. Yeah. No, it is difficult to you know get a hold of the graphics because it's all thrown at you at once. I'll and, chalk it uh, up as a as a rookie mistake on that one. But uh, yeah, one yeah. hell of a fold though. Six high flush draw, or six high flush. Yeah. No, that's that's amazing. So Alex is open to twenty with aces, and uh, David D definitely going to continue here. It's on the button. It's got king queen suited. Which a royal draw? I mean, you're gonna see almost any flop for under thirty bucks. And okay, so I've just been told by the back room that backdoor has the ten of spades and possibly another ten or an ace. Now, the reason why I say this is the Three of Diamonds is actually one of the muck cards, and we don't know what his other card is. So that Three of Diamonds is a so, question mark. Yeah, so you can essentially X off backdoors 10 whatever, and uh, he re-raised there, and aces 4 bet to uh, 245. Now the King-Queen is gone, and uh, I, this has got to be pocket 10s for him to continue. And in most cases, I don't, I, I don't see much. I mean, if he has ace-10, he's folding. 
King yeah. 10 folding, 9 10 folding. Yeah, Jack 10 of spades folding. I mean, like. Yeah, it's got to be another yeah. 10. He's in your re raising and turning his hand into a bluff. He oh, did. he did. He goes all in. He's going to get snap called by aces, and Alex is going to hope for a positive run out here. This is just out of control. Oh. So Alex shows his aces. Backdoor reserves his right yeah. to hang on to it. So he's asking how many times you want to run it. And uh, looks like uh, Backdoor does pick up some hope. Man, he he bakes the diamond. No, 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 no. Oh, Remember, no, the three no. diamonds is okay, not is sorry. not Backdoor. The doors. three diamonds isn't in, but um, so uh, the graphics are a little, a little wrong. So da Backdoor does not have the three of diamonds, so he does not have the diamonds. We do know he has a ten of spades and a mystery card. So Alex, what's funny? Uh, what I just heard from the back room is is that he mucked his hand. Backdoor did. Yeah. Okay. And Alex took the pot down. Got it. Uh, Mercer Asian, uh, the three of diamonds is actually incorrect. So, uh, yeah, that was a, a misread from the uh, card reader. It happens. Basically, a card flew over the uh, card reader, and the card reader picked it up as his card. So... Aces yeah. win. So Aces wins. We could probably say back door had maybe pocket tens, but not the ten of diamonds. Is ten, our guess. Yeah, ten ten with the ten of clubs. Yeah. That'd be my guess. Pocket tens. Ten of hearts. And it looks like he's uh, either gone and thrown in the towel or uh, gone to the at the moment machine, which pays one to one. Might add. Uh, also, like to thank Stones for charging so little on their ATM machine. Oh, the yeah. ATM machine doesn't charge like bubkiss compared to other places, but that's it's just very little, generous of them knowing that yeah. us poker players need cash at all times. Yeah, just a little perk, a little perk of the house. And uh, yeah, no, as an employee, I you know pay the same fee as everybody else, and I'm happy with that fee. You know, it's the same across the board, and it's the only machine in the house too that pays. Um, 98%, no, no, like 99% payback. <laughs> Depends how much you take out. True. Yeah, but it if it's a $100 minimum, it's at least uh, 2%. or er, So it's 2% or greater. Got it. But it's never greater than 100%. <laughs> oh, wow. So G-Man hits his set. This is an interesting hand. Yeah. David is inside it with his gutter. Yeah. And a backdoor and club. So G Man's gonna check and Dave's gonna check and uh G Man's not gonna let the cat out of the bag yet. I don't blame him, but he does at some point need to try to get value or protect his hand. And he does induce a bet with the check here. And uh you're raising the spot, yeah? Yeah, uh, you got to protect your hand on this one. Straight jaws are there, flush, double flush jaws now. Yeah, you can't just flat and let like a I'm okay with a this bad card peel off, and <laughs> I'm great with this uh, check raise here. Okay, yeah, no, I definitely am too. Now this is interesting. Uh, yeah, it's down to those two, and uh, G-Man just takes it down. Shows a nine. All right. Yep. He's trying desperately to uh, advertise, like, hey, I'm not playing as. Uh, you know, as tight as you guys think I am. Yeah, this, yeah. I'm not an ABC guy. Yeah. So he shows a nine, doesn't show the other nine. Yeah. Except I wonder if the players noticed if he looked at which card he showed. Because that's something that I've noticed when people flash a set, but only one card. Oh, they only they only grab one, knowing yeah. oh, that's the nine. They don't pit. They don't look at which card they flip over. Right. They're just. Huh. This is this. You know. I could put that in my notes then. Yeah. As well. No, that's a. When you double back, if they double back and then we'll show look at one both card, and then do it, yeah, then you can say like, all right, that was probably safe to say he didn't have a set of whatever that was, you know. But if they just, you know, don't look and just here it is, you know, and then put it back, it's kind of it's probably a set, but you know, to each their own. And this is another. Good flop for G-Man, but he's in another cooler spot against Alex. And uh, yeah, both players have a five. 
I don't think this pot should get too big, but it might. It's also four straight on the board, uh, the four completing the straight. Yeah. So it looks like Alex let it go, which is a good situation. And uh, that was not a ship. That was a moving of the chips. And uh, G-Man yeah. takes it down. Definitely. That was definitely the uh, right move by him to protect. And uh, yeah, if he chooses to check call or just check, 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 I mean, he's going to find himself in a losing situation yeah. against 8-5 every time. So, uh, well, back to the uh, the showing card. I I kind of put it into if someone shows you a card and you take a look at it, it connects, but they won't show you the other card. I a lot of times think the other card is a very very strong card. If they yeah. show like a card that connects to nothing, then then that's one thing. But if they show something that's like third pair or fourth pair, or no. uh, uh, I'm just assuming the other card was pretty strong. Yeah, no, I actually agree with this because usually when a player takes the time to bullshit you. And they have a monster. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what I've learned, in, at least in tournaments throughout the years. If a player takes the time to BS you, um, they've probably got the nuts. And you need to run. <laughs> and they have you beat. Yeah. But, you know, some players are experts at doing that. And it's a whole other level you have to. Full of garbage. You have to connect with. And a perfect example is uh, Kasselhoff, David. Kusselhoff, Kusselhoff, or whatever. He's a tournament pro who talks. And he talk, 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 talk at the poker table. And uh, he's amazing at being able to talk people into folding and talk people into calling. He's like the Mike, he's like the new Mike Matisau. Or the, or the Kasuf, or yeah, Kasuf. That's what I was talking about. David Kasuf. 13 years ago with uh, when yeah. Jamie Gold made his run, just oh, basically by talking. He was the and wow, what a turn! So Greg hits his. There hit was his. more begging from uh, what, not uh, David Kasuf or, or uh, not Kasuf, but uh, Jamie Gold, than any WSOP that I can remember. So set of tens on the turn. Set of tens, Sick. top pair. Yeah. Pocket jacks for G-Man. And uh, Ace Queen looking pretty good. Uh, diamonds are. Might be factoring into decision making here, but probably not too much. Um, I think Greg is just trying to figure out what kind of value he wants to get. Looks like he fired out about a hundred bucks. That's eighty-five. And uh, now I have a feeling Ace Queen is gonna look this up. Yeah. I can't see him mucking. Uh, well, I guess I could because it is a three flushed board. I mean, you you can, but. Also, calling yeah. is also a good, uh, uh, usually can be a, a, a good decision here as well. So he's getting a little over to three and a half to one. I mean, yes. Like, are you making this call here? Are you not making this call? It's almost four to one. Uh, I would probably, well, n now I can see what, what, the, what the hand is. But if Greg's been very active uh, this entire time, I would look him up more often. Yeah. And also Dave being... Uh, a winner tonight might factor in him calling, but looks like he's in muck position. Yeah. And he lays it down. Wow. That's actually a very disciplined, very good laydown. Yeah. Because that was only an $85 raise. And, you know, to the pot bottom. was three, like 300 and change. And, uh, yeah, that was that was a really, really disciplined laydown. Yeah. Good laydown. And one of the factors, too, I think he's he's up and he's winning. So it, I know me in that position, I'll sometimes most likely yeah. have a better chance of calling, um, calling there. Uh, but he made the right decision and laid it down. Yep. No, and Emrich, I believe I actually completely agree that is a very exploitable fold. Um, it's a good fold in that particular case, but it's a fold that you know you can basically take advantage of. Later, yeah, MRT and uh, a lot of people in the chat are are yeah, correct a, on a lot of these for for overtime yeah. laying down top pair and everyone knows you're laying down top pair could potentially get you into trouble and exploitable to to be bluffed off of basically almost any river. Yeah, I wonder if that was the plan. Anyways, this looks like a is this a bomb pot? I'm not sure, but there's a whole lot of hands Ooh. going on and Pocket Kings is in here and Alex has got to be thrilled to only have lo be losing this much. 
because yeah. he's got pocket kings. There's an ace on the board, and uh, and one yeah. of your kings is out as well. Wapri hanging on to one of the kings as well. Yeah, but, you know, no. kings are an ace magnet. Just yeah, no, every time. Shoot, there were so many sick bad beats I've seen. They've just been out of control, like one outers. Well, I mean, on this stream not too long ago, maybe about a month ago, kings aces preflop with kings laying down preflop. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's. I stopped to watch the, the stream uh, while I was here and uh, couldn't believe it, but he made the right lay down That's for that time. actually pretty amazing. That doesn't happen very often. And that was in a tournament, too. That's yeah. So. Have you ever laid down kings pre-flop? I have. Tournament and... Uh, yes. Yeah? Were no. you did, the, did the guy show aces, or...? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, actually... He didn't show aces, but the way the action went, there was no other hand it could have been. It went one bet, a huge two bet, a min raise on that huge two bet. And this was early in the tournament, right? Or not early, but kind of early, okay. right? And like I said, it was a... And then there was a flat, right? Interesting. And that flat... And I'm in the small blind, and I have pocket kings, and I mucked it. Interesting. Yeah, one ace hit the board, and uh, or not one ace hit the board. There was no ace to hit the board, and uh, no aces ended up winning the pot. Okay. Yeah, but like I said, it was the flat behind the huge raise where I was like, that guy's got aces. <laughs> There's nothing else that he could have right there. I do the player. I mean, that's part of it too. Yeah. So the player dynamics. Yeah. You know, your spider sense, your your aces sense were going off there. Yeah, I my tingly my tingly sense was telling me like, hey, order some wine, get <laughs> well, rid of this hand and order some wine. Well, when you had kings in that spot, looks like Wap right here also has it. So pocket yeah. kings, three bets to thirty six. Now, in a game like this, um, when you're holding a suited ace, are you yeah. taking a look at a lot of flops? So, ironically, I would. Like, ace-5 suited, I'll take more flops with than ace-6, ace-7 suited. Uh, just more because it, it connects with a 2-3-4 board more. Yeah. Uh, the ace and the 5 can connect a little bit better than the ace and 6 or ace and 7 offsuit. So I have a weird gap of, like, ace-6 ace six to probably ace-8, ace-9, ace I, I probably let go a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, don't pay attention to, but in the other situations, yeah. don't have a problem with them. That makes sense. Yeah, it's a great board for kings. Uh, nine high board. A little connected. So, 160. It's been raised by 9-7 on this board to 160. And well, he does have top pair Watt with Bry. a gutter. Yeah, Watt Bry with king Watt Bry with kings here and a beautiful t-shirt. I love what's on <laughs> your t-shirt. It looks like the little yellow submarine, which I believe it is. And uh, we, yeah, he's in a spot here. That it's it's a tough, like G Man put him in a tough spot. Uh, yeah, I actually really like this because G Man is going to get to see a turn probably, and if he gets raised here, he gets away cheaply. Yeah, you're right. He, ooh, no, and he does decide to just ship it, and uh, looks like Kings makes the call, and uh, we'll see if Kings holds here. Kings does get a hold. Wow. So, uh, yeah, G-Moon doubles through, and that's $820 pot. And uh, I'm supposed to tell the... Uh, I'm here. Are, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, you're here. Okay. He, he told me he's here beforehand, but I had to ask anyways, just because <laughs> there could be a ghost because his name is Ghost of M. At least I think that's Ghost of M. Hey, look, I'm looking at myself on camera. Look backwards. That's actually quite bizarre. Anyways, uh, you see the uh, bomb pot sweatshirt there on the uh, little window. That is the uh, sweatshirt that is, I believe, it's still available. Um, Stones Life Poker can definitely help you out with that one. But uh, yeah, no, that's Poker Mama. She was. Uh, the uh, one who took the liberty of letting Robbie decide to or er, commentate this evening, which actually, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm 
I'm glad for the opportunity. Yeah, no, definitely happy to have you here. Yeah, yeah like I said, I know you're a good tournament player. I've seen you at plenty of funny tables. I've also busted you. I oh, think. yeah, yeah. You, well, you crippled me on a couple of them and busted me out on another one. I I think I don't have a good <laughs> track record with, with you at the That's table. That's a good thing. But, means I, but I can't lose if I'm just commentating with you, right? There's no money no. at yeah. play here, so... Exactly. Yeah, we can just sit down and talk strategy and decide to figure out. And by the way, that hand I absolutely hate. Ace ten, rip it up, throw it in the trash. Oh, that's your ace jack is mine. Ace jack suited, ace jack offsuit, whatever ace -jack, ace combo ten. is not. Yeah, uh, I have. It's all the same. A decade's worth of pain. Rip it uh, up, throw it away. It's just a done hand. I mean, I might as well just. Yeah, it's just a, just bad. And the only time I usually yeah. play it is probably a short stack in a tournament, and I see it and I have to ship, and I'm losing a lot of the time yeah. uh, in my memory. No, I'm actually definitely with you, because you're only called by a better hand, and if you hit your hand, uh, you find yourself up against straights, two pairs, whatever. Oh, oh wow. wow, another trips hand. Hmm. Both have to feel comfortable with this. Goes yeah. Check, check. No, these players need to start betting to find out, like, hey, th there's a point when you need to start pot building, and this is it. I think they're doing it on the turn here, so. Yeah, I mean, it should have happened on the flop, to be honest, because there's two spades out there. Just hoping your opponent might be drawing. But, uh. Swap ride bets 30, and. I apologize, I have a huge knot. It's With a min raise of 60, so. Wow, that's actually a safe river for Mike with the jack. And ace jack, funny. Funny we were just talking about that. Ace jack would have won this hand, but at the same time, but ace 10 would have lost. It's also one of those things, though, like if I had ace jack at the hand, that jack's never coming on the river. It's just, yeah. for me, it's just never happening. Yeah. No, uh,. I'm a firm believer in, you know, I just go by statistics, and even if I know statistically I'm not a favorite to win the pot, but pot odds, like I'm supposed to try to go for it or whatever, I may or may not, depending on my opponent, Yeah. if I feel that I can put that opponent in a position to where their odds are worse, I won't do it, but if I feel like I, that opponent and I are in an equal playing field, I will do it, you know, does that make sense? Like, yeah. I mean, like, it's like how I play against pros, right? I make, I force pros to gamble with me. They don't want to gamble with you because they know they can beat you in the long run, right? So you try and just sort of put them in a position to gamble against you, and it often works a lot. And levels of playing field. Yeah. Especially those uh, people yeah. who just, the grinders who are here, who play 12, 13, 14 hours a day. Yeah, because they don't, they don't want to take a, you know, 55, 45 with you, they'd rather take a 70, 30, you know, and force them to take that. It's another interesting hand brewing. <laughs> David has now hit a straight and a flush draw and cannot possibly be disappointed with any river other than a black seven because a black seven makes uh, the two eights that are in the hand. Yeah, he would, his straight would get <laughs> counterfeited. Yep, and it looks like 8-5 might be giving him some action. Hold on a second here. Sure. Excuse me. Alex under the gun, suited ace. Definitely playable hand, pumps it up. Sorry, I just got uh, told by one of the players, physically beat up and uh, assaulted. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just got told by one of the players that... Uh, 
I will never be forgiven for mispronouncing his name, and he will remain nameless. But yeah. <laughs> well, we have some guesses, right? Yeah, I am definitely in the shit box on this guy. So I'm sorry. I love you if you're out there. <laughs> oh, and what a sick turn card. Oh, man. So in this situation, like. Yeah, Alex had a good equity on that turn with that ace high flush draw. Yeah. Uh, so the front door diamond draw, he's ended up making a straight. Yeah. And he's not going to get any equity out of this hand. There's no equity to be had. And, uh, yeah, no, it's definitely, uh... But isn't it always fun that you th you're you looking for a hand and then you just hit another hand that you weren't seeing on the flop? It was Davey. I mispronounced Ghost of M. Yes, you are correct. His name is Davey. <laughs> Barstow, I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. I love you. Have a nice day. Seriously. Do you want a drink? I mean, like... <laughs> now, I hope you guys are enjoying the ski season, by the way. It's been raining a ton, and it's been cold enough to snow, and the snow has just been awesome. See, that's a whole world that I know nothing about. I, I don't ski. What? I don't snowboard. Why, yeah. I'm commentating with somebody who's never seen the cold. Oh, uh, I just don't do well in cold. That's, I'll go up and do some cabin stuff, but skiing and snowboarding, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, rather in the cabin yeah. watching some football, drinking wow. some hot cocoa. Um, uh, get out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, seven hour drive. By the way, you know, I own a station wagon with a bed in the back, and I sleep and I coddle my keys, skis, <laughs> and then I wake up at eight and I'm already on the mountain and I just walk over and I'm first in line to hit up KT22 and be the first one down after four feet has fallen. Oh, and it's lovely. And then you just go home after that? No, after that first no, run, you're just, I'm lap, done, I'm going home. I do lap after lap. I'm the first one up, and then run over to head wall, and then shoot over to Granite Chief, and then I do the backside of Granite Chief, back over, and then oh, I get some quality time and some quality laps in. See, while you're doing that, I'm, I'm taking a nap. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to enjoy skiing, you can watch Red Bull or Warren Miller stuff. That's, But we're here for Stones Live, and Stones Live is definitely... Yeah. More important. I mean, like, <laughs> seriously. Ooh, I know I've promoted this room, but, like, like, what is this place? Do oh, this, I mean, this place is home. Uh, whenever you need to, to play some cash, play some tournaments, and make some friends. I met you at a poker table. True. And yeah. And we're friends off, genuine friends off uh, off the table and off commentating. That so. is very true. Yeah. Nope. When I've met, for one for stones. So. Yeah. Cheers to that, buddy. And Tom gave me his ring, so I now have a World Series uh, yeah. poker circuit ring. So. Congratulations. If you sell it on eBay tomorrow, I'm going to punch you in the face. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex had an interesting flop with a 9-9 board with his pocket queens. I'm yeah. Able to take it down. I would have paid more attention to that flop, but nobody connected, and nobody gave him any action. Yeah, and a yeah, 9 seems, 9 low card with yeah, pocket queens. It seems to be the issue tonight that there's not too much action flowing around. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'll get. Um, so uh, we did have that cold deck hand of aces, queens, yeah, tens, and deuces. Poor G man has just been cold decked all night. And a few trip aces on trip aces. Uh, T dog, uh, you can revoke, and you can be revoked. Have a nice day. <laughs> and uh, Rick Barstow, I agree. There is nothing like trolling the world. So now a hand like King Queen, King Jack suited, I mean like in a cash game you hit top oh, bear, are you valuing those or are you like Yeah, if I take the betting lead before, uh, I'll probably continue on the on the flop with a lot of boards. Yeah. Uh, especially one on one with a heads up. I'm gonna continue a lot. Okay, and in this spot, are you just quietly giving up? Or are you continuing well, when you hit Mike, King Queen? Mike B does do river. does hit the river. So, Colin Alex's uh, turn bet is gonna pay off with him for him here, and it goes check over to him, fires. 
Oh, okay, but you're you're okay with him calling the turn bet because it wasn't too if it, big. Yeah, because it's a small enough, and if you're deep enough, you know your opponent's deep. All right. Uh, There's equity so, to be had. Yeah. So if it's I, worth calling. If our in Mike that and I had six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars in, I I don't That's mind a that. Dollar. <laughs> no, he, uh, it was a call. So. Oh, okay, that was a call. Sorry. I I thought I saw like a, a bet buck, of a yeah, dollar. A, a buck fly in. No, but, that was uh, that was his call. Yeah. Yeah, that's the correct thing to do. I mean, like, he took a small betting line, and he did. It is a hundred eighty-two dollar pot, so that's not a bad pot. No, he got paid. So on the on the thing with the ace on the board, and you hit your queen on the turn. Um, I'll I'll fold if the bet is big enough. Uh, but if I'm pretty deep and the bet is small, I'll sometimes and I have position. Uh, yeah. The options that I have, uh, if it's checked to me, I can try to take away the pot, or. A gin river comes, a king comes, or a queen, or a queen comes. Yeah. I'm gonna get. Uh, I know I'm gonna get paid there, or get, or at least have uh, a, um, a pretty decent hand to evaluate if I get if I uh, get raised on. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. So the old seven deuce finds the dumper. Um, uh, king eight is ace jack. Let's see what ace jack does here on the button. My least favorite hand. And Robbie's least favorite hand has opened to 23. Ooh. He has opened to 23. And he takes it down. And, uh, yeah, he did just pick up the blinds. He, so he does something I can win. never do, which yeah. is I can never win with these Chuck. <laughs> wow. Do you have, like, a, a favorite hand that isn't a premium hand? Uh, five deuce. Five, oh yeah, because that that won it for you. Yep, five deuce suited. I realized I was on the same flush draw as another player, except I had a pair. He did not. Um, there was a couple over cards. It was a paired single paired board, and uh, the pot was pretty sizable. It was uh, a couple k. You're thinking? Uh, it was almost six figures, so it was a juicy pot. And uh, Mark G is all in. Hey, is it for a dollar or? Thanks, JFK. That's very important, by the way. Glad to hear. Yellow submarine. Do, 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 do. I love his T-shirt. It's so fantastic. Right. Uh, since I'm the rookie in this booth, is that right? Mark G is all in for a dollar, or is he had more behind? Uh, he. I'm not sure. It depends. The dealer, when some a player moves all in, they're supposed to toss the, the yellow, yellow all, chip, the all in button. But if a player bets in front of him and the guy tosses out a buck, that signifies a call. So, uh, okay. sorry, I was waving bye to a friend. There's uh, well, lots I mean, of friends in here, but look what's in front of him, right? It, or, yeah. <laughs> all right, another question for cash game. How low do you usually go before you rebuy? Like, do you go all the way down to zero, or or do you feel comfortable like the twenty big blind, thirty big blind mark, hundred big blind, or are you comfortable going down to like three, four blinds and just play super short stack? I like having forty big blinds or more. I really like having fifty. Yeah. Fifty bigs is enough for me. Fifty bigs is my number actually. No. Yeah, 60. 60 uh, bigs? 50 to 60. I yeah, mean, so you like going fishing for the big pots. Yeah, yeah. I, li I like the wiggle room. I like having pots. In the tournaments, I actually shoot for having 40 to 50 bigs. I yeah. mean, I try to go for 50 bigs, but sometimes you just, the blind structure, it's it's difficult to keep up with. <laughs> or in a game where other people are trying to take your chips, uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of hard to, yeah, to get what you want out of it. True. To get your 40 bonds. Yeah, no, absolutely but, true. Yeah, cash game. It, it really does change it up if you have 20 bigs versus 100 bigs. You can go fishing with your inside straight draw against another big stack yep. versus if you have 10 bigs or 20 bigs, it's yep. uh, you got to let a lot of marginal hands go and just play tighter. No, I so, actually uh, absolutely agree. The reason I bring it up is uh, if, if he was down to $6, you basically you'd have one move. Just gamble, gamble away. <laughs> And uh, JFK Stones, thank you very much. And I'm sure Robbie thanks you as well. Uh, yeah, no, definitely happy to see a compliment from my boss. I'm sure everybody loves that. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the, the shout out, JFK Poker. Two, two pairs from the same hand. Oh, oh how sick. Oi, oi, oi. Everyone feels comfortable in that they're going to win this pot. 
Yeah, you don't think either player is scared of the old 9-7-er? Or 8-10? Race to 57. <laughs> I, I do like that. He doesn't know he has the same hand, but I do like this move if, if you guys are... Bumps it straight up, and he says, okay, let's play. Make it big. This is sick because if the board runs out Like this. Yeah, he is liable to win. Uh, no, he turns it against him. So wow. the flush showed up, and he turned it against now him. He's, now, now Dave is going to represent the flush. Also a great move. And another decent... That's a good call by... Uh, David there. And he goes, check, check. I think they both got scared that each other had the flush. Yeah. Uh, no, the call had to scare the crud out of Dave there, but that was a fabulous bet on the turn. It's probably going to be the most fun $2 <laughs> win that you're going <laughs> to yeah. get. The scariest $2 win. Yeah. So now, they, here's the cool leveling part of it. They both were representing yeah. hands that to make the other person scared of. And Dave's bet there, in order for his opponent to raise him, has to have a straight or a flush. Yeah, that's and, what he's representing. That's, and that's what he has to do to find out if he's good. I mean, yeah. And that turn card, if you pretend like you have diamonds, uh, you kind of you make the other person with two pair a little scared. Yeah. But fun, fun two dollar win hand. <laughs> that was amazing. The little yellow submarine just mucks. Uh, so, Rick from Barstow, I believe there is somebody who says hello, somebody special. And uh, she does happen to be one of the lovely female dealers in the uh, Stones Club. So, uh, yeah, no, Rick, she says hello, Rick from Barstow. What's up, lady? No muck. Hello. And uh, love to you, Devil's Advocate. Um, by the way, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, do what you got to do. Um, by the way, hi to love, love to everybody. I'm just out to, you know. Oh, look at this. All the love in the chat. Yeah. No. It's always like this? It's on a good stream, <laughs> you know? On a good stream, there's always lots of love. And we got lots of good stuff coming up. Lots of good stuff coming up. I mean, you got the big game tournament that's going to be hilarious because there's actually going to be money in tournament pots in the middle of the tournament randomly. I also like this because poker players are also sports fans, so they may be a little bit emotional if the Patriots are winning or if the Rams <laughs> are winning. Uh, Do you imagine just like every time there's a touchdown being like, I'm going to steal that blind. <laughs> <laughs> or just pay attention. Who's a Rams fan? Who's a Patriots fan at your table? See yeah. who's off, who's who's on tilt. Yeah. Definitely use that to your advantage. No, and if you guys wonder what I'm talking about, I'm talking about on February 3rd, they're doing the big game splash pot tournament at 3.30 p.m. It is a 125 buy-in, 12,000 chips, 25-minute levels, fantastic structure, and uh, every tournament table gets 50 bucks if there's a touchdown scored. Every tournament table gets 25 bucks if there's a field goal scored. Now, I'm not talking about every person at the tournament table. It gets just like in the pot. that pot gets 50 bucks. That next pot gets 25 bucks, you know? And you never know when it's coming. So all of a sudden, you could have a pot with 50 bucks in it. And it's worth, yeah. Sometimes it's worth fighting for. It's, it's. It's bait on a table with yeah. a bunch of sharks. I don't think it's, has it been done? I don't know I, I've never, I've never done it before. Uh, I, I don't know if this has been done before, but it's, it's definitely interesting. I've never seen it before, for sure. You know, you, you guys piqued my interest for Super Bowl Sunday coming here. It's gonna be fun, yeah. Uh, TV's all around. The game will be on. Yeah. So. Yeah. This room has definitely sucked me in for life. I mean, like, unless they build something amazing. Well, if you have no plans yeah. for Super Bowl Sunday, come on down here. For the oh, Splash Pot my tournament. five deuce could eat somebody right now. So he's flopped an open ender. And uh, a couple pairs of eights. We got king eight and nine eight. And then a gutter ball from six deuce. But, uh... 
See, this is the kind of situation why I think five deuce is so dangerous, and I love this hand. Yeah. Because say ace eight or ace four is in this hand or ace three is in this hand, boom, ace on the turn. Gets right? a, gets some two pair. They're on the hook. You have the yeah. straight. And they don't see that straight, no. not at all. Get blindsided by it. Yeah. And cool. it's part of the reason, like, I learned Omaha first, so that might have something to do with it. You know, the, the draw-heavy game, yeah. Omaha, Omaha 8, yeah. And because I learned Omaha first, like, I know my strengths in tournaments, and I know my weaknesses, right? My strengths are extracting, like, value out of big hands. And, uh, you know misrepresenting mis you know misinformation like what Dave's doing right now with, with just a up and down straight draw is, is yeah. raising the pot yeah no he's uh it's a strong raise to, like it's just two and a half x with king eight how would you feel here I would feel like I'm losing but uh <laughs> but at least got there <laughs> got there yep one down for the five deucer five deucer takes the pot down nice yeah. nice 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 because Mark was all in, and yeah. uh, which is top pair, and someone is re-raising you, uh, I I wouldn't feel that with with a pretty dry board, other than your tucked away hidden deuce five. Yeah. The yellow submarine. Your T-shirt has got that song stuck in my head. Thank you for that, by the way. Do you think we can sing that song? I, I don't think uh, we can, right? No, it's not we, mess with that. Well, I mean, you know, like, sing if you want to, but, dude, my sing voice is not so good. I can sing you a German nursery rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't even know there were German nurs nursery rhymes. Uh, there are a lot, but the ending's usually not happy. It's more real. <laughs> I, I have no idea what that means. That means, like, say, you know... In America, the bunny lives happy, you know, or the the three bears live happily ever after, you know. So it goes. In the, Germany, the two bears that didn't build their house right, or no, the two p dwarves that didn't build their house right, uh, got eaten by the bear, and the, the one who built the house right didn't get eaten. So this is a story that you tell the kids before they go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and it, you know, that's why they. It's just a cultural difference, you know. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, hopefully you don't get to tell me these stories then. They're just cute little German nursery rhymes. They're just, you know, more realistic than the false hope that gets spread around so much. Uh, and Greg here with top pair and a bad kicker and uh, lots of opponents. No. But Dave and Wap Ride not really working with much here. Yeah. So Greg, when he bets out fifteen here, I mean, how do you? How Pot you, of twenty six. Yeah. How you feeling if you get called? I'm feeling okay. Uh, you're worried about a ten, uh, but there's a lot of chop opportunities, chop pots. Uh, yeah. There's two diamonds on there. You also have to keep an eye on for there's a diamond a lot of, to come a lot out. Of draws, a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I'm okay sense. with that lead out. Um, and say an ace comes up, a king comes up, a diamond comes up. You definitely have to proceed with caution. But no, definitely agree. But you're comfortable. Yeah, I'm okay with leading out. I'm okay with leading out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and maybe you do want to draw to come along, and they brick out, and you get a couple streets of value on it. Yeah. No, that's true. Actually. Now, if you get raised, how so do you feel about that's it? That's the whole reevaluating uh, the situation. Um, you know, we, we've seen a couple moves here where someone, where people are pretending like they, representing that they do have their completed straight or their completed flush. So, uh, especially with this, with this lineup here, um, that's the danger of, of betting out and getting yeah. check raised or re raised or, or getting pushed off that hand. So yeah. you have to keep that in mind as well. But uh, I would usually still lead out with that, uh, no, with that board. Definitely agree, actually. That's. Especially but, if people are showing bluffs, see, like that can get to me as well. The confidence, though, I have in being able to call somebody down in a cash game with a seven kicker is just—it's. So the thing is, difficult. It's, it's challenging for me. The pair board, though, so yeah. that, that kind of that changes up a little bit for me. Um, I mean, so. Don't get me wrong. The one-two game, I can crush all day, and I'm not afraid to call there. But like the bigger levels, like 
it's spooky for me. Yes. I don't know why I have so much trouble detaching myself from the chips that are sitting in front of me. I mean, the, the skill level to it, it, you know, obviously the higher you go up, uh, yeah. the skill level also goes up. So you also have to keep that in mind. Where... Because tournaments, I have no problem. Even the Shooting Star $7,500 buy-in, right? I had no trouble just motoring through and caching, actually. I didn't go super deep, but I made money. And that's, that's a good run, right? You yeah. know, like, this... Those jams I don't mind because it's not money to me. It's tournament chips. Right yeah, in front of it you. becomes a last longer contest. Now, uh, Ace Three did flop a pair of threes and he bet out thirteen bucks. I don't think he's going to get action. Yeah, no, took it quietly down. Uh, we haven't seen too many big pots. I think there's just been that big one there, Alex, with the one point six k. Yeah, and then uh, and that the sick again, aces, queens, yeah. tens, From deuces. Lot, right? That was such a sick setup early. A few trips on trips, ace, oh. trip aces on trip aces. Uh, an interesting split hand where they're both level, trying to level each other. Yeah, uh, it was the most fun three dollar pot that ended up being split, but. Uh, ended up being i think almost close to four hundred dollars <laughs> them trying to make each other fold and representing yeah. uh i love that play from from both of them hey look your favorite hand just bumped it up that's you ace tens you right Ooh, yeah ace tens your oh Whoa. look what it runs into this Pocket should be interesting kings. uh so ace 10 here has raised to 20 kings has just flatted and i actually sure, really tricky. like this and he gets a interesting that's board actually a there. great board for him. Yeah, he still has over pair with the up and downer. Yeah. He can beat the 10. He's got an over pair. If an ace hits, he's still in the lead. He holds two blockers to the ace 10 straight. Um, the spade draw is right there out in the open. Um, if I were him, I would have been betting. betting a little bit earlier than he chose to bet. Um, now, if he fires and gets raised, he's put in a really, but you know, yeah, that jack, sort of like you could put someone on fishy situation, you know. You yeah, might. you could put someone on jack nine pre-flop or on the flop. Yeah, I mean even jack ten. Yeah. Nine jack, you know, jack king. <laughs> but still a great flop for yeah. pocket kings, up and downer, over pair. Yeah. No. Nope. And, and you're right. You're blocking the ace. You're blocking ace king for, uh, for the nuts there. Yeah. Absolutely. No, the, you're holding two blockers and you have the redraw. So if you're beat, it's okay because you got your redraw. And it's probably good because you're holding two blockers. Yeah. And uh, if you're not, well, see, he, it's just bad luck. For me with kings, guaranteed an ace on the flop. Guaranteed. That's just superstition. Everybody <laughs> has that superstition. I can count as many bad beats as I've given people as, like, they've given me bad beats. I always try to remember the bad with the good, you know? There have been times when I've seen five people ship it in, and because I had them out-chipped so much, I decided to gamble with them with pocket deuces and whacked a deuce to beat aces, kings, queens, and tens in the same Just game. like it happened earlier today. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's like... It was a 20... 15% of my stack to knock out four players. I mean, like, with deuces. It just went for it. It's another interesting hand. So we have uh, two fours. Uh, the ace has saved the day for kickers, for contest of kickers. Um, so both Watbry and Dave have a four, and they're going to probably split this hand. Mike and White Bry on the flop look like had inside. They had gutter straight draws, as well. <laughs> Both of those bricked out. Rick Barstow, I hate to say this on air, but I am a Warriors fan. I always will be. I was born in Alamo, which is near Oakland, and uh, the Warriors—they're my team. They're my team. And uh, if the Kings never win, uh, actually, to be honest, I don't follow basketball they're match. doing pretty good like the best the kings have been in a very long time uh, really? but the thing is they're in a very tough division western versus east i think if they were on the yeah. east they'd be a they'd be a good seed in the playoffs right now i think we're <laughs> hanging on around 10th okay so a couple of spots out of the playoffs uh but it's first good season we've had in a very long time so but i grew up in the bay area so the warriors are still 
Close at to my heart. heart. Yeah. But I also live like eight blocks away from the Kings Arena, oh, yeah, so yeah. Then you definitely I go there a lot. Be... Yeah. So I'm there a lot. And also, uh, a few years back, I was actually on one of the committees, steering committees for uh, the arena. fun. Yeah, yeah, for the arena. Right on. Talking about uh, when we had to go build it. So another fun hand to Bruin, ace high. Oh, magic. Two players have just flopped a Flop. flush. Oh, sick. Uh, so Dave oh. has flopped a flush with his uh, Doyle Brunson special. Oh, but that's a sick card that showed up. That may, that literally. It's going to save Dave money, maybe. Maybe next Yeah. Year. No, if I mean if they started really pressing the pot on the flop, this pot could have got out of hand. We're but now ten deuce can muck, can just say, "Ah, oh, you're good, whatever." And uh, Mike in his king eye flush is going to go ahead and bet out a hundred bucks, and, and uh, the ten, yeah, just lets it go. That's the problem with not getting the money in earlier. See, I'm a big fan of like, if you flop a monster or you think you flopped a monster, start building that pot. You know, it's I think, you, you're either gonna get paid or you're not. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, there's a couple ways to to play it. Yeah, that's that's definitely one, and and definitely profitable that way. The other one, if you have a monster and you want to try to lead someone else to have something else, yeah. uh, you can check it over to them or check it back to the pre-flop raiser, and hopefully have them bet, and then you can decide to raise or continue to play coy. Just happen to be action killer on the turn. Yeah. Oh man. Think of the turn. If the turn was a is a blank. Yeah. Um, like, regardless, both had flushes and they're both going to go at it. But if yeah. you had that king high flush draw, or that king high flush, um, it, and a blink came on the turn, you could probably keep them on the hook a little bit longer. Yeah. So I, it, in my opinion, I would just call that a salty run out. Yeah. I mean that's like one of those things where, when I flop a monster and it gets beat, it's just a salty run out. I mean I, not. I should say, I get pocket aces, four to a flush, four to a straight show up. That's a salty run out to me. Yeah. You know, where the betting's still going on on 4th Street. And uh, it looks like that's the end of our game and the end of our stream. Game right. broke. Yeah. Uh, and we had some fun hands, especially, I mean, we keep going back at aces, queens, tens, deuces. And, of course, the deuce, deuce 4-4. Four, four that was such a sick hand, flop. wasn't it? There's oh, nothing man. you can do. I, could you get away from aces? Maybe I, I'm not good enough potentially to let go yeah. there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I definitely don't fault him trying to hang on with that aces. He yeah. could be ahead against flush draws. Uh, and the preflop action determined oh. to me that someone doesn't have a four. Yeah. Maybe ace four, but you're blocking ace four with your two pocket aces. Yeah. Four, five suited, maybe three, four suited. I'm probably definitely not counting that in. So Yeah. Well, I think it's probably because of the holidays, but uh, thank you for watching Stones Live, and sorry for the abrupt uh, Stones Live ending of the 1-3, but it happens. I mean, games happen, but no, I'd also like to thank uh, Robbie here. Hey, Another thanks, buddy. wonderful tournament player and uh, cash game specialist, by the way. Hey, I appreciate you guys <laughs> having me here. Stones, you guys have been awesome here. Uh, too bad that it didn't last a little bit longer, but I think... You still have the edge on me in beating me in tournaments, beating me in cash game, and beating me on the line. I think the line I set here was like seven hundred dollars with a big uh. hand. Crushed it like within fifteen minutes. So it's just, you still lord over me. I got ten years on you, so that maybe that's <laughs> it. I, well, actually, I have no idea how old you are, so uh, that's just one of those things. Well, in <laughs> poker years, I've been playing for about eleven years. So. Okay, then I got you by six, yeah. five or six right. or seven. Maybe. There you go. Anyways, Stones Live, sending love out to everybody and. Uh, Right. Wait, lady, who? Wait, what? What? I got called a. I hope so too. I love you guys. Wow. Anyways, sorry, the chat just went AWOL, but, uh. Well. well. Oh, well. Anyways, good night, guys, and, uh,. Right. Robbie, pleasure. Hopefully Thanks, we'll see you again, dude. Appreciate and uh, likewise, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Stones Live, I think. Checking out. Yeah. Yeah, checking out. Sounds good. Bye, guys.